Happy Sabbath and welcome to Living Mana Seventh day Adventist Church. We are so excited and happy that you are with us today. You know, before we go live, um, before we go live on the air, I can we can see where a lot of you are visiting from because you're telling us. And so we are so excited to have so many people from all around the world. Um, and please, when you um, say happy Sabbath in the chat, tell us where you're watching from, because that really just thrills and warms our hearts. I know when I first um, logged on or looked up at the screen, I saw somebody from Kauai and you're thinking, OK, that's in America. Yes, but it's 5 a.m. there. And so we just want to say a, a, an ex a special welcome to you for getting up so early to want to watch it live and not later. Um, also, a special welcome to all, all of you, all of the different countries. Right now, I'm seeing Ireland, I'm seeing Canada, um, California, which is uh, the state that we're, well, we're yeah, where we're from. <laughs> mm -hmm. So welcome. We're so excited that you're here with us today. It really is a blessing to just know that you come back week after week and you're sharing. I mean, so many people are are, are viewing um, our church service, our Sabbath school uh, program after we even air it live. I mean, there's just like thousands of people for um, sharing um, on your platforms and with your friends. And so God is really, uh, really blessing this ministry. And we just want to say thank you. Yeah, we want to uh, welcome everyone. And again, we see... Uh, see where all are coming from <laughs> new york and, virginia uh, colorado tennessee arkansas yeah so we just want to welcome everyone we thank you for joining us this morning we uh we even see huntsville yeah we saw huntsville, we saw huntsville that's where we are we that's, that's where we are where live we are. that's where we live um and so uh yeah, I'm not sure. Some people are saying that we are looking kind of fuzzy on, on Facebook. I'm not sure what's going on with that. We are uh, clear here. Are we um, clear on YouTube? Those who are watching um, on the YouTube channel, you could put a one in the chat um, if you're not having any issues. So, uh, yeah, just as a, as a heads up, um, we are in Huntsville. Huntsville? And uh, northern, so northern Alabama, the northern Tennessee, Alabama, Tennessee Valley. Mm -hmm. And I need you to know something today. Uh, the allergies out here are, are, are different, a beast. So I'm going to be struggling today to oh. not sneeze, to not <laughs> do Pray anything that reveals that I'm seriously struggling with allergies right now as we speak pray for him that, so, yeah. that god can can take it away he's he's taken some some things to help with the allergies so we're just praying that it kicks in so pray for him but again we welcome you we got a good uh study this morning we're going to be continuing our study on the sanctuary yes and um we're going to be um continuing going through uh the or dealing with the issue of anger and right. how it relates to or how we can find the solution through, the, through sanctuary. the sanctuary service. Uh, and then, of course, so this is our fourth. It's our fourth um, week. Yeah. And, and then, right. And then after, uh, after the Sabbath school, we'll be going into our fourth and final message uh, from the four-part series, uh, The Dangers of Fast Foods and the 12 mm -hmm. Benefits of Living Manor. So we're going to be going over the last three benefits of Living Manor today. And you do not want to miss that so again we're going to just invite people to just hit the um the share, the share button. button uh invite your friends invite everybody you know let them know hey this is live right now um just invite them to watch watch along uh to mm -hmm. participate mm -hmm. you can also watch from altar live so hopefully right. altar live is running uh, smoothly, by the way, last week we had our, I wanted Go to ahead. talk, about, ahead. That. talk about that. So last week was the first time that we did, what are we calling it? Like I, our after, after sermon book. discussion. Yes. Um, in altar live. I know that you've invited them to go there. Um, and Charles actually hosted it, but it was an amazing, um, discussion. The amazing thing about, altar live, you can see, I mean, you have the option to like, 
see what well, you can hear. You can turn off, turn off your mic or turn on your mic so you can hear each other or hear this or hear the responses, not just mm -hmm. in the chat, but you can hear each other's responses. You can actually take out the video and you can see each other. And it really felt like the beginning of a family unit coming together, like a real church yeah. family. Yeah. Um, and the things that you guys shared in there about what you learned either through Sabbath school or church from church, the sermon and or both were just um inspirational and amazing. So I know that's going to happen again today after uh, the the sermon, after the divine worship, we're going to um, immediately go right into altar live. And so and the link will be shared for altar live um, so that those of you who are not a part of it, you'll be able to um, get on there so that you'll be able to be a part of the afterglow discussion. But it really, um, I feel like it was a, a dream come true. A dream of yours from like many years ago. He's always like, yeah. we should have an, an after discussion after the sermon and, and just really like, you know, see and hear everybody's um, thoughts and feelings. And when we were um, about the message and how it touched them and just even going deeper than, you know, even what the message did uh, yeah. for them. And so when this is when we were at um, a regular church, a building church. This is a regular church, but you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that just never happened, even though it's something that for years he had said. And then last week it actually happened. And I have to say that it was absolutely amazing. So yeah. we invite you um, to to join that after after the divine worship service, um, immediately after that. It yeah. really is a blessing. And it doesn't take up too much time. I think it was like 20, mm -hmm. 30 minutes at the um, longest, but it didn't feel like that. Yeah, it just was like just some really good stuff. Yeah. So, so we're gonna do something. I'm gonna because I, I see a lot of you are, are talking about the um, the like it's fuzzy again and it could be our internet connection. So can we put up on the screen? We'll be right back. I'm gonna do something very quickly to just try to alleviate that that problem. So we can just put up on the screen um, one of our. Uh, uh, one of our slides, and we should be back in about uh, 20 seconds. So, uh, should I be muted on eCam or StreamYard?
Okay, uh, Patrice, you could try to bring us back. Happy Sabbath again, guys. Hopefully that is uh, better, we're hoping. Uh, All right, how are we looking now? Put a one in the chat if you could, um, if you could see us better. Uh, that should solve the problem. All right, we are. All right, yep. we're getting one. There we go. Okay, good. We, go. we are so happy that um, that didn't take too much time. We want to bring in Dr. White. Yeah. Um, and so that we can continue our discussion. I know throughout the week we get messages. So many people are blessed. Uh, by Sabbath School and by what Dr. White is bringing to it. So welcome, Dr. White. We welcome you. I don't know. I think you might be muted. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Okay. Hey, guys, how's it going? It is going good. I'm practicing my breathing and staying calm. This is what Sabbath School Live does, right? What Sabbath School Live So it's does. like the tools. Yeah, really. In between, I was like, okay, Lord, breathe. Breathe through I, it, what I teach I my know, kids. So, but doing well as we're breathing through it. <laughs> I, I know God has a sense of humor because he sure is testing our anger. Right. <laughs> as we talk about it, as we as talk about it. <laughs> yes. Um, like I was saying, people have been very blessed. We get comments all throughout the week, emails, uh, that people are being very blessed by what has been shared so far. And we're not done. Uh, we're not done by any means. But before we jump in, I want to say um, we are. I'm asking that we should have a word of prayer just to ask God to bless and anoint uh, the rest of our service. So why don't we do that okay. at this time? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we ask that uh, as we continue our study on uh, anger and the sanctuary, Lord, that you would uh, just guide our thoughts, Lord. We pray that those that are watching, those that are listening will be blessed. Um, <clears throat> those that will watch in the future uh, will, will get a sense of your presence, Lord, and, and an understanding of how to deal um, with anger. And Lord, just guide our conversation again, Lord. Um, infuse us with your thoughts is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I want to see uh, from the chat how many have watched if you've watched, if this is your fourth time tuning in and what you've watched all four, I want you to put a four. If it's three, if it's two, if it's your first time, a one. I just want to kind of see uh, who we have watching, how many times you've been able to, to view and, and, and to see. Um, again, all right, we have a, we've got a couple of fours that have popped up. Uh, for those who are going to put a one, because I'm sure there's some ones in there, you know, we started this originally because um, of something we saw, I don't even know how long ago it was now, but I guess like maybe a month, five weeks ago, maybe six weeks ago, when the whole world was just shocked when Will Smith did what he did um, um, in front of everyone, right? Um, and so we started thinking, and I mean, as Dr. White and myself, um, as a therapist and as a psychiatrist, we deal uh, with clients who, and of course, you know, being human, <laughs> as humans, we deal with this as well, but that struggle with and, and with anger issues. And as we all know, because sin is in the world, we all can be triggered and can respond incorrectly yeah. uh, to things when they happen to us in life. And so that was the reason why we just thought, you know what, let's do something about this. And then it turned into, uh, let's use the sanctuary as our model to go through, to be able to, um, just to see, to find the answers, right? Because God says, uh, thy way is, uh, is in the sanctuary. And so we are finding so many amazing things practical things. Um, that's what we want. We want you to walk away from this with a practical understanding of how you can deal with this emotion um, in your daily life, because that is really uh, where it's at. And mm -hmm. so we are now, uh, well, we covered the table of showbread. Did we finish it completely? Do you guys feel like we finished it completely last week? Or if you want to give a little recap for some of the ones um, that are out there. You can you can do that, Dr. White. Yeah, sure, sure. So we are discussing the uh, Hebrew sanctuary, and we were directed there by Psalms that told us, "Thy way, O Lord, is in the sanctuary." 
and we started at the cross and the cross immediately would remind you. So imagine you're in your angered state and that first article of furniture that you're seeing posted and it's even labeled number one is the altar of sacrifice. And it reminds you, you're not on the cross. Mm. And then, and then after you are jolted, you're reminded of that. Then you would shift over to that second article of furniture, which would remind you to die to self. Mm. So it's a reminder. It's not even about you. It's not about you. Um, and so it signified um, baptism. And we said that's what then prepares you to step into the holy place because the the priests that were ministering in the sanctuary they required they were required to stop at that altar wash their hands wash their feet and listen to that wash your hands get those hands sanctified get those feet sanctified okay and then you can go into the holy place where we encountered that first article of furniture and that was the table of showbread that was featuring, if you will, living manna. Isn't that right, Pastor? Mm -hmm, that's right. And so, and so what, what we said is like, so now the, the key is that you're dead to self, but you're alive in Christ. The goal is that the manna feeds the right aspect of you. You, re, you recall when um, the chill, when Adam and Eve were, were, were blocked from the tree of life. Because God says, we don't want to make sin immortal, okay? Mm -hmm. So we don't want to feed the wrong thing. Right. And that's why it's so important that you're dead to self, um, because you want to be fed. You want that living manna to feed the right thing. Mm -hmm. And so we, we made the point that scripture is written to the sober mind, okay? It's written for everyone, but I just mean... Really, when it's going to benefit you, it's because your mind is sober. And we described how sobriety is asking the right questions. And we right. talked about those universal questions. Right. Who am I? Why am I here? What is my purpose? Why is there so much suffering in the world? And in that context, when you go to scripture and it reads, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and so we also said that so you see scripture being written to the sober mind, but then you see Paul, he was writing to an audience, you know? So whether it's Rome, it was Christians in Rome, whether it's Galatians, the church at Galatia. Um, and so you see there's an audience and, and, and it, it sort of just shows you that you want to get into a mind frame and scripture will benefit you even more. But then we said um, scripture has a prescription. Mm -hmm. And so we found that Proverbs, we, saw, we found that Proverbs has a lot to say about anger. Mm -hmm. And we're hoping that this study will literally have you go through scripture and, and look at some verses, some of the important verses um, that help you. And so we saw Proverbs celebrate being slow to anger. Okay. Um, it, it championed ruling your spirit. And then um, we saw in, 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 in Matthew that it said, look, if you have a conflict with your brother, mm -hmm. go to him, go to him and you and him alone resolve the issue. That by itself, that's a recommendation we rarely follow. We talk around the issue. We talk to a lot of different people, mm -hmm. but we rarely go to that person alone. Hmm. And why is that alone part important? You ever see people's ego when they're in a group or in they're, company? Yeah, the, they're, the, the, the walls that they put up, it's easier. They can come down. It's e more and, easy, easily to come down. And, and sis, it's interesting because we both know that the whole goal of communication is to get past those, those objections and to get past that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, defenses is what we right. refer to it as. When people are defended and blocked, we often mm -hmm. can't actually get through to them. Right. Um, and when people are in a group, they they are they're often thinking in terms of performing for the group. Mm -hmm. And when it's just one on one, sometimes you don't deal with that, and that's why you see scripture saying, "Between you and that person alone." So there there are less defenses, there are less issues, there's less performance. 
-hmm. But then there's another, and, and we found that in Matthew 18. Hey, Doc, uh, doctor, I don't mean to interrupt you, so I apologize, but there are people who are probably watching for the first time and right. altar sacrifice and labor and all that just went over their heads. And, and that's why I made this chart bigger. You could barely see us because I, I wanted to just kind of let the people see. You understand what I'm saying? What we're yeah. talking about. So I don't know if we could just take a brief moment to um, go through those articles again and just briefly touch on them. Uh, and then you could pick up with your thoughts. So uh, no I just made a smaller. I made that screen bigger. Hopefully everybody can see that. Um, you you want to do it or am I doing it? You want me to do it? Well, uh, yeah, just go ahead and do it. We'll talk about the first four that we've covered so far. Right. Well, you can see at number one. So it's conveniently labeled so you know exactly where to start. So um, right at number one, you see the altar of sacrifice. It's to remind you you're not on the cross. Then you get to the labor, which they would wash their hands and feet at. It's labeled number two. And so it's sanctifying the priest's hands and feet, but it signifies baptism, death to self. And then you move from there into the holy place. Those three uh, furnitures that are arranged, that's actually the holy place. That's a bird's eye view of the holy place. And first on the north side, you'll see the table of showbread. That signifies scripture, okay? Um, that signifies um, the bread, bread of heaven. And, um, and so last week we talked about the role that that bread plays in feeding you. Yeah. And so I was, that's, that's I was good, right there. Yeah. You can, we, we haven't yeah. even touched other articles yet, so we could continue right there. And yeah. Minimize that screen. yeah. <clears throat> and so, yeah, so we discussed how Proverbs gives you quite a bit of advice as far as um, the wisdom of being slow to anger. But then we also, um, and, and, and ruling your spirit, but then we talked about Matthew having a recommendation for how to resolve conflict, because an important part of anger is conflicts. And so he talked about how go to that person alone, and if that doesn't work, then you go to that person with two people, two or, uh, two or three people, and if that doesn't work, take them before the church. But step one, if you just do step one, nine out of 10 times, you don't even need step two and three, you know, mm -hmm. um, but then let, but at step one, before you even go to them, there's another verse in Matthew chapter seven, where I think it's Matthew chapter seven, verse five, where it says, um, before you remove the speck out of your brother's eye, remove the plank from your own, mm -hmm. meaning do the personal work to where you can see how your own issues are, are so much bigger than the issues that you're bringing up with that person so that when you approach them, you approach them with humility. You approach mm -hmm. them with humility. You can say, look, I feel like you have this issue just like me, just like me. Mm -hmm. What a different discussion you're going to have. Right. And so, of course, the pastor brought up, our goal is to practice this. We mm -hmm. got to rehearse this. We got to practice it. And mm -hmm. um, and th that, that was the majority of what we were going to talk about with scripture, I think I think the only thing we were going to just end on mm -hmm. was um, Paul's admonition, and and we keep saying this verse: um, "Be not." Con oh, actually, it it would be cool to read the whole thing because it's just so it's just so powerful. Uh, Sis, it's one of the most neurobiological texts in all of scripture, and mm -hmm. you find it at Romans. And it's chapter 12. Mm. And you guys already know it. And it reads as follows. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. Mm -hmm. Now, keep in mind, he's writing to Christians in Rome. Yes. So think about the time of Rome. Think about the fact that they're being persecuted. And so get that context in your mind. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. This is the least you can do. Mm -hmm. And then he follows it with this. And be not conformed to this world 
but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind mm. that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Be not conformed to this world. This world is designed to conform you. It's yeah. designed to change you. It's designed to affect your thinking. Mm -hmm. It's designed that way. And he's warning, be not conformed. Resist that. Mm -hmm. Not conformed to this world. But be ye transformed. And by what? By the renewing of your mind. That is the living manna. That is the living manna that he is giving to feed you and help you with your anger issue. That is what we're applying to it. We need to not be conformed by our surroundings. What do you guys think of that? Yes, <laughs> that this world does try to uh, conform you. And, you know, the way we, um, I mean, as, I mean, if you're talking to the Christian, right? Like at, to the Christian, we're not supposed to be uh, looking at, at what the world um, is doing and responding like the way the world responds um, and, you know, getting defensive, getting angry and, you know, handling <clears throat> things in that way. But to the person who doesn't know anything about God, right, they just may think like, OK, this is just the natural way uh, that you respond. But we know that through because of the table of showbread, that through God's word, that he has the power and the promises to keep us from those uh, by allowing the uh, the tsunami of that negative emotion taken take over us, and so we know that the power is there through God's word. Yeah, I think I think uh, we should be reminded, and we should remind those <clears throat> that as they uh, look on that the sanctuary is a type of the temple, and we talked about that last week. Think of this sanctuary as these articles of furniture as six um, points of thought that we need to learn to run through mm -hmm. whenever we are being tested, tried, tempted, mm -hmm. right? We need to look at the cross and remind ourselves that what we're going through is not as huge as what Christ went through on the cross. We are not on the cross. Wash it off. Don't let it stick to you, the labor. Mm -hmm. Replace my own words. I'm going to go give that guy a piece of my mind. I'm going <laughs> to go give that girl a piece of my mind. Replace your words with the words of, of scripture, with the words of God, right? Um, these are the almost like the thought points, right? Mm -hmm. The safety points where God is saying, listen, if you can learn how to how to quickly maneuver through these articles of furniture. If you can learn how to quickly think through these articles of furniture, it's going to save you from a lot of heartache, a lot of stress, a lot of, you know, <clears throat> correcting mistakes that could have easily been avoided. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is what we're looking at. When we're looking at the sanctuary, it's not just a kind of like a, you know, these are not just talking points or, mm -hmm. you know, hey, that was a neat comparison of scripture. It's right. God is literally showing us in the temple how he wants us to think in our temples. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when we can get that, when we can understand that and begin to practice that, it's going to change. It's a game changer, mm -hmm. as we would say. Mm -hmm. what, what you're saying is so important because... Really and truly, when you wake up this morning, when you, you we should really ask ourselves, what is my purpose? Mm -hmm. What is my purpose? Right. If you call yourself a Christian, if you call yourself a Christian, right? Mm -hmm. and, and think about it. I'm a Christian. And what is that? A follower of God. Excellent. What is it that God actually wants? Mm -hmm. God is wanting to show what he looks like in your situation hmm. right that that that's really what our life is all about you know so so you can see he's not interested in me speaking my words he speak he's interested in speaking his words mm. right and and if we're not pouring his word into us 
what what's going to come out is our words. Mm-hmm. And I, I assure you, you don't want to hear my words. Mm-hmm. You know, right. you, you don't want to see my actions. Right. You, you want to see what God looks like in my situation. And, and that's why we need this process. Can we scroll up to, there was a comment by, I think her name is Michelle. I think it was Michelle. I really liked her comment and just put it. Uh, she said instead, uh, yeah, that one, instead uh, of counting to 10, breathe through the six steps. Mm. And I love that because um, I'm always, you know, again, as you know, telling my clients and for myself, like you said, when we had to go off for a little bit, it was like, breathe, breathe through it, you know, take a deep breath. It help. It helps to get your mind right for you to be able to, Sometimes that tsunami of emotion comes so quickly, um, not sometimes, all the time. So to be able to even click in or dial into the prefrontal cortex to think like, let me begin to, you know, imagine the sanctuary steps, you know, and those types of things. Like you have to kind of almost just breathe through it at <clears> first <throat> and then begin the process yeah. just to to calm down, not to to give in to that uh, tsunami because yeah. Jesus has a more powerful tsunami to wash it away. We talked about that with the labor, but um, yeah, I really like that comment, Michelle. And let me add to that because, you know, I think it opens up a really powerful thought, mm-hmm. which is this. We need to understand that when God made the sanctuary, right, where we often think like God is just like, oh, I'm making this building, you know, Mm -hmm. for y'all to uh, understand who I am. And yes, Mm -hmm. he is making the building for us to understand who he is and how the plan of salvation works. Mm -hmm. But that sanctuary, it's almost as if he was showing us a model of ourselves in that sanctuary. Mm. So remember, Jesus comes on the scene and he says, destroy this temple and I'll raise it up again in three days. He's, he's, He's introducing the idea that this temple was really pointing to a human being, right? A human being. So the New Testament expounds upon it and says, know you not that you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. So now it lets me know, okay, that temple in Old Testament is really a picture of me. Mm -hmm. So if I buy a new TV or a new computer or anything, and I want to figure out how the thing is supposed, like I can just disregard the instructions. Mm -hmm. But if I want to know how the thing works, I got to look at the instructions, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's, it's as if the sanctuary, within the sanctuary, are the instructions for how we are to think and feel and act. Mm-hmm. And there's a reason why Satan doesn't want people to understand or even know about this, this sanctuary. Mm-hmm. It's because it is the key to revealing God's way for us. So in right. breathing through those six steps... Okay, according to the instructions of the sanctuary, of which I am a symbol, a type, or anti-type, or everyone is, mm-hmm. according to the to the to the to the mechanics of the sanctuary, I am supposed to die to self. Mm-hmm. I am supposed to just allow this to wash off for me. Mm-hmm. I'm supposed to respond with the words of God, not my own words, Mm -hmm. right? I'm supposed to let my light shine. I'm supposed to dwell in light instead of dwelling in darkness. And each one of these becomes an object lesson to teach us how we as temples should be operating. Mm -hmm. And doing it reflexively. Mm -hmm. That's right. And doing it reflexively. You see, the real issue with anger is nine out of 10 times, it's the result of an ambush. Yeah. It's an ambush. I don't, if you've, if you've ever seen any of the war movies or anything like that, the movie is boring until the troops fall into an ambush. Mm. And the whole point of basic training is helping you to condition reflexes. Mm. In In a battle scenario, there's no more time to think. There's no time to think. 
your must your body is going to do what it's been trained to do over and over and over again any of us in any significant discipline mm -hmm. discipline it's our behaviors have become <clears throat> reflexive reflexive yeah. and so that really is the point that you see that these principles become reflexive in your behavior yeah. because i promise you i promise you we use it we're not we're not telling you stuff that we don't use like i get triggered so often and i'm immediately going don't make it worse don't make it worse mm -hmm. this is not this is not this is no time to speak i've been married for 22 years in in july and yeah, one of the what one of the would you say i said we almost have two years on you <laughs> <laughs> What, what I learned way too late, sis, is um, is don't say the first thing or the second thing or the third thing that comes mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. or the <laughs> Maybe even the by, by around the seventh or the eighth, then we start, you know, to get some ideas I may want to share. Mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. But the idea is this needs to be reflexive. Yeah. Um, so be not conformed to this world, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And I think that sets us up to then be ready for it, the next mm -hmm. article of furniture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Before, you guys I yes, I just want to say something. I'm just kind of looking at the chat and some different things that are being said. And I don't want to take us off completely, but I just want to address something because I think it's important. Just like uh I just think it's important. Um there's something like, you know, if you die daily, like first thing in the morning, you you can't get angry, right? Um, and I think that that's, um, I think we should get a good understanding of that. Like if you get, if you have, uh, if you feel the emotion during, like when people are saying that you don't have to breathe through it if you die daily. So I guess that's kind of what the person was saying. So, and I'm, I just want to make sure we're clear here that, you know, if you feel like, let's just say you have, you know, you, you have, you spend time with God in the morning you commit your life to him that morning and your day goes on and some things happen and you feel that tsunami of emotion. Is that sin to feel the tsunami of emotion? Pastor? Yeah. So when, you know, when we, when we come to Christ, um, we are really no longer tempted. <laughs> now, this is the reason why we are called like, you know, listen, as, as a Christian, you are going to face temptation. Of course. As a Christian, listen, anger, and we were talking about that. I forget, we, we actually, Charles has actually mentioned this, this last week, that we need okay. to do a whole presentation on, the righteous, on the godly the anger. Righteous right? Amen. The righteous indignation. But we're focusing on the tsunami no. yeah. of anger that's. That is sin. Yeah. If you if you give into it, you can still be angry at a good cause and sin over it because of your spirit. True. Right. right. I yeah, mean, true. Moses, he was frustrated with the people, and you know he had a right to be frustrated, but he sinned in it. So what I'm saying, what we're saying is this: many times as parents, we have the right to be angry, but we, yeah. But, but I mean, we uh, the right to yeah but not to behave the way we do sometimes. You're going to be tempted to be angry. That if, you, if, if, if you're thinking, oh, I, I will never be tempted because I died, it's no. And, and, you know, I think that point needs to be clear. We, we need to understand you are going to be tempted. The mm -hmm. flesh is going to want, mm -hmm. you, as long as you're in the flesh, mm -hmm. it's, going to, it's going to tell you, man, you need to be angry mm -hmm. at this. Mm -hmm. And you're going to struggle with that. Yes. <clears throat> but that's what the Christian walk is. That's, that's why we're breathe, called to... Oh. I'm pick sorry. up the cross. Go ahead. Well, I was going to breathing through it and then, you know, and then taking your mind back to, okay, um, well, first of all, I'm not on the cross and then going through the steps of the sanctuary. Yeah. Well, like, pe people think I'm a, you know, I mean, people think I'm a, I'm a nice person and some people will be like, are. Pastor, do you get mad? Listen, yes, I, <laughs> I breathe through stuff at every <laughs> Every day, all right? Every day. Every day, like, Lord. Like, because we are we are surrounded by these challenges. And I'm going to... Yeah, our yeah. sinful nature is still there. I'm going to tell you how deep this is to God. In the Old Testament, 
God literally took them through this process. Eh, va, re, day. Just think about that. They didn't have a day off. Oh, okay, a day off from the lesson of it. No, no they... every single day, God was like, all right, we're going to run through this again. Right. Y'all got it? Okay, we're going to run through this again. And he did that because he understands how deep sin is within us. Mm-hmm. So every single day, it wasn't like, okay, you get Sabbaths off, everybody relax, y'all worked hard through the week to understand that. No, mm-hmm. every day of the year, mm-hmm. the sanctuary was operating. Mm-hmm. God was teaching. God was demonstrating the same lesson over and over and over and over mm-hmm. and over. Mm-hmm. Let's, yeah, I mean, powerful, absolutely powerful. And let's speak to this, the breath, because let's deal with science. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so when you take the right breath, mm-hmm. you literally... You literally, with the right breath, you're literally activating what's called the parasympathetic system, yes. okay? Um, the, the vagal system. Like, mm-hmm. with the right breath, you're literally slowing your heart rate. Mm-hmm. You're reducing your blood, blood pressure with the right breath. So it's yeah. like we've been designed with the ability way. to calm ourselves, mm-hmm. to calm ourselves. So, so this breath issue, it's, it's nothing to necessarily just discount. Right. Um, we are empowering you with processes because here's the thing. People enjoy discussing the Will and the Will Smith and the Chris Rock uh, mm-hmm. in the context of them. Okay. Mm-hmm. They enjoy doing it from that context rather than acknowledging, I don't know what my triggers are. Mm-hmm. I don't know what all my triggers are. Mm-hmm. It was, it's a wonderful example of what can happen to you if you're unprepared. Mm-hmm. And, and, and even though I don't know <laughs> some of my triggers, I don't know all of my triggers. And right. that's why this work is so important because you would, so, be, shocked. You would be shocked at, the, at what the right ambush can bring you to. Yeah. Right. So right. I, I want to, let me just amplify that a little bit, doctor. Like, I don't think that Will Smith ever thought I was going to say that he didn't that up, he would do he didn't get up that morning thinking, he didn't get up like, that morning thinking if, if Chris Rock says something crazy about us I'm going to get up and yeah. do that because they had had according to reports had had a little situations before so I mean you know it's just like we don't get up thinking that if Satan creates the right ambush mm-hmm. I can possibly do something that is so out of character right. for who I am, of, you know, of who I am mm-hmm. and what I would do, right? Mm-hmm. We don't understand. And, and, and I think the problem is because a lot of times we don't really understand how deep sin runs in the heart, how deep the sinful nature is. Mm-hmm. And we underestimate it. We, we call it sinful. How about influences? How about influences? Like, are you a are, are you paying attention to the things that are influencing you? Mm-hmm. Um, the answer is to a degree you are, and the other answer is to a degree you're not. Mm-hmm. We are not even aware of how things are influencing us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. and so so that's why this topic is just so important. That incident was supposed to awaken us to what's possible. Yeah. Right. What's possible. <clears throat> right. And, and so it's there's so many things we're pouring into us that it's only later that we're going to see the consequences of having that placed in our subconscious. Mm-hmm. That's what this that's why we don't want to the goal of this is not to focus on those two people. No. Because because it's it's really not about them. It's what can we learn? And the first lesson is we are so much more vulnerable to being triggered than we would first think. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So let me do the work to figure out what are my triggers. And then, and, and even then though, there are situations that can bring a response out of you, you would never fathom. Mm-hmm. And, and that's why this work is so um, critical. Yeah. I like Patty's comment, comment saying practice uh, self-observation. Like we don't spend time um, enough. Um, again, I feel like I say this all the time. This is another thing I work on with my clients, just awareness, becoming aware of 
um, like you said, Dr. White, like our, our influences, but also just um, just aware of what, you know, possibly could be uh, your triggers or even, you know, your thoughts that could just set you off to respond in that way. And so um, spending some time really getting to know yourself um, in a way like, you know, so many times um, we spend time doing different things and not and drowning out like what's really going on inside of us. And it's very important to like get more in tune with yourself, with your thoughts, uh, because those are, you know, affecting your feelings and your behavior and emotions and all that kind of stuff. So uh, yeah, just becoming more aware. Right. And, and um, sis, wouldn't you agree that it's almost like a lot of us run away from mm -hmm. opportunities to kind of become acquainted with the deeper aspects of ourselves. Yes, because it's, yes, I, t I agree. It's almost like a fear. So, you know? yeah. Yes, it, 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 yes. So um, I think when you go back to the sanctuary service, remember the whole point of the, the, the crux of the sanctuary service was God showing how you get rid of sin, right? So if God's way of how to get rid of sin is found in that sanctuary, mm -hmm. like, and this is the, this is the, um, this is the thing, like a lot of us thinks, think that it stops at the cross, the mm. altar of sacrifice. Mm. God's system shows that there's an altar of sacrifice and a labor and a table of showbread and an altar of incense and a seven branch candlestick and an ark of the covenant and a mercy seat. And it all ties into the cross, but there are processes within that cross that make it practical. You look at the articles of furniture. I'm not going to blow it up, but you look at the articles of furniture, the, the picture we just had on the screen. No, let me do it. Let me do it real quick here. So just look at this. Let's pull this over us very quickly. And what you see is the shape of the cross. Mm -hmm. That's yes, the sir. shape of the cross, right? Mm -hmm. That's the cross right there. However, that cross, it's not just a, you know, some like intangible principle. Pick up your cross, follow me. The cross is made up of these various principles. Mm -hmm. It's made up of these various steps of sacrifice and and, and, and the word of God and, and letting that sin, uh, you know, washing yourself from that sin or allowing God to wash you from that sin, <clears throat> letting your light shine. All of that is what makes up the cross. And sometimes we minimize that cross to mean something very simplistic mm -hmm. when there is much more detail to the process of bearing the cross. Uh, absolutely powerful. Um, pastor, um, so th there was this talk about being triggered and if you die daily and it made me think about if, if you die daily, then maybe you won't need to, you know, breathe or, or go through these processes. Pastor, you, you preached a sermon once about, um, the fighting stance, mm -hmm. the fighting stance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you talked about how in, 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 in most fighting stances, you need a low center of gravity. Yeah. You yeah. need a low and the lower sort of the better. Um, because if your center of gravity is high, mm -hmm. you're vulnerable to being knocked over. Right. Yes. right? And mm -hmm. and and that's where how much lower can you get than if you're dead to self? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Like, if you're dead to self, you can't be it's harder to get knocked over. Mm -hmm. Um so I, I was just thinking about that when you talked about it. Mm -hmm. So this all sets up the transition to the next article of furniture, which is the altar of incense, which is the altar of incense. Um, and I can tell both of you that this will be just the intro the part intro. one mm -hmm. of it. <laughs> well, absolutely. Just because, oh, we, can, just yeah. because we can continue on next week with yeah. this furniture, uh, article of furniture. But no, we're going into it now, but it'll we'll go on even more next week. Right, right. So, so, so again, you came at this, you made sure that your, your, your motives were clean, your hands were clean, your feet were clean. You know, I'm just, I'm just gonna let people see where that altar yeah. is while yeah. you're talking. Absolutely, let, let, let's um, show that. So your hands were clean, right 
now you're in the holy place. So it's number four. It's nice and conveniently labeled. And notice the process. You you saw the crew, you saw the cross, mm -hmm. you then um were at the labor, then you went to the table of showbread. So notice all of that is gonna inform the experience that brings you to article number four, which is the altar of incense, which signifies prayer. Mm -hmm. Prayer. Oh my goodness. I mean, now this is where things get amazing because you and I both know prayer changes things. Mm -hmm. Prayer changes things. So it's, it's one thing to just drop to your knees and pray, but imagine being brought to that process to really introduce the practicality of this. Imagine if Will had paused for a second after being triggered. Right. Up a prayer. Yes. Imagine yes. if you were throwing up a prayer. Lord, how would you like to use this situation? Mm -hmm. How would you like to use me mm -hmm. in this situation? Mm -hmm. And please don't focus on him. I right. want you to focus on the situation that triggered you. Yeah. And imagine if you would have pulled back and said, Lord, how would you like to be to use me in this situation? Mm -hmm. Would it look any different, the outcome and how things unfolded? So, so that is the <clears throat> sort of the intro to this idea of this powerful tool of prayer. Mm -hmm. um, were you guys wanting to add anything before we delve any further? No, I want we want to I want to dive in. I was just, I don't know, I was thinking, I'm looking at the comments and I was thinking like, yes, the if, if that would have happened, that would have been amazing. And that's what should happen when, you know, this this breathing and tsunami and all, all of this is happening at the same time. And then to, to pray through uh, that emotion would be, you know, amazing. I just think we have people, when we think about this, like, it's easy because God gave it to us in that sense, but it's hard because of our sinful natures and everything that we have against us. You know, you think about like, I mean, as for women, I'm speaking for women right now. Like we have our hormones, hormones that y'all don't even have to <laughs> battle with um, that fight against, they, they work against us. They, it, they work with the tsunami, if you will. And it, you know, wants us to get like angry, just like that. Um, so just thinking, I was just thinking and processing, watching the comments or, listening, or reading the comments and just thinking how challenging this really is. But because God gave it to us, it is possible. That's like my shirt says, I can do all things through Christ. And so uh, because of because of the power that God gives us through this process, it is actually possible, even though it feels like at times it's not. But go yeah. ahead. Let's go deeper into uh, Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to add this here. Um so when we talk about prayer, and this is kind of just like I'm formulating this in my mind right now. Whew. We talk about prayer. We look at prayer as us initiating a conversation with God, which, which I guess is not true. <laughs> that is so not true. That it's a conversation between us and God. It's like that, that concept is like, you know, God was doing something else. He was having conversations elsewhere. And then you came along and were like, hey, Lord, can we, um, can we talk? Can we, do you have time? The Lord is always talking to us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Prayer is our response to God. Mercy. So yes. if you look at the table of showbread, right, what does that symbolize? It's the word of God talking to you. Mm. Mm. Do, you do you see that? Yes. It's the word of God. Don't do that. Don't. All right. Do you hear me? Mm. Are you, I need you to respond. I need you to, I need to know that you are tuned into my word right now. Lord. You catch that? Mm. Mm -hmm. Prayer is our response to the word. So the table of showbread is God speaking to us. Prayer is us engaging In a dialogue. with God. You catch what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. So I just um, hadn't thought of it like that in that context before. But as I'm looking at, you know, because we were just talking about the, the table of showbread is God's word speaking to you. And, mm -hmm. you know, don't do this, but do that. Mm -hmm. And then prayer is our acknowledgement that we have heard. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Right. It's, it's the acknowledgement that because what prompts us to pray? Mm. Is there anything in ourself that says, you know, I ought to pray. I know God's. No, no, no. That's the spirit of God yes. that has prompted us to pray. When we pray, to respond. we are literally responding. We are not initiating. We are. And that's the problem is that. <laughs> Yeah, I think you, you were talking about the AM and the FM. So often we're not tuned in to God. But in that moment of trouble where we're like, oh, mm -hmm. now we want to, you know what I'm saying? In a sense, all right, Lord, mm -hmm. when he's been talking to us, when is there a time that God is not talking to us? That would be my question. It's just finally when we tune in, we hear like, oh, or finally when we start to get into his word, then we, then we hear him. Or, I mean, the Holy Spirit is speaking to our hearts. And this is why, while you guys were talking, I'm just thinking it's a three-part thing. They all do, they all have their roles. Uh, because the word of God, the written word of God is always speaking to us. Um, and then, but then there's times that people don't even know. There's a lot of times that people don't even know that written word of God. Mm -hmm. So the Holy Spirit is speaking to our Speaks hearts. Speaks the word. Um, and they don't even know that that's the actual word of God. Yeah, um, yeah. For Christians, we know that it's the word of God, but the Holy Spirit comes in and reminds us like, oh, almost like when you get a text and you have messages, but you haven't read them. Mm -hmm. So the Holy Spirit is like, oh, you have this message. You have mm -hmm. this unread message. Um, or you haven't read it recently. Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. And, and then when you're praying, that's when you're responding. I don't know. That's the analogy I see in my head. Brilliant. Um, brilliant. What's, it, what's interesting to me is you started to ask the question, um, you know, why, why don't we do this? Mm. And, and we need to alert you. Why is this not a reflex? And mm. it has to do with the influences that we subject ourselves to. So many of us can say we've watched movies, right? Movies, by the way, that they're telling a story that may span a hundred years, a lifetime, <laughs> decades, and these movies at times will go throughout the entire thing without one reference to prayer. Mm -hmm. without, without the main character stopping to pray once. And the problem is solved. And the problem is solved. They come to the solution and everything, and it's, a, it's absent God. Yeah. And you just poured that into your consciousness. And then you'll watch movie after movie after movie. What is the programming? That, that, that habitually, when crisis hit, the discipline is not, okay, Lord, what would you have me do in this situation? What would you have me do? And so, so that's an important influence for us to be aware of as to what might be impeding developing the reflex to say, it's time to speak to God. The next thing is the biphasic nature of prayer, the mm -hmm. biphasic. Most of the times when we think about prayer, we think about that speaking component, right? We think, okay, part of this is for me to speak, right? Mm -hmm. And can you imagine having a friend who would just pick up the phone, start speaking, and as soon as they're done speaking, they hang up? Yeah. Can you imagine a friend like that? You know? Mm -hmm. And But that speaking part is really important, and keeping <clears> it real <throat> is really important, as said. But what's the other component that, you, that you're talking about, Pastor? Listening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. listening what is what what is what is god saying to magnify how important this is we have to go back to the word now i want you to think of two of the most powerful prophecies for us in the last days it's daniel and the revelations and those are two characters daniel and john the revelator where where did they receive that i was in the spirit on the lord's day Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Daniel was so committed to prayer. His enemies said, you know what? Let's make an edict against praying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the only way we'll get it. Yeah. And, and Daniel, he was so committed to prayer. He's like, then I need to die. Then I'll mm -hmm. die. Mm -hmm. Mercy. And yeah. I'll die because I got to pray. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I gotta pray. That's how committed. And what, what was the fruit of that commitment? The fruit of that commitment is God revealing to Daniel mm -hmm. the information that's relevant to us to mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. biphasic nature of prayer, the, the us speaking, but then us also receiving, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Prayer changes things. Yes. Yeah. I was going to say, I think God, because, you know, when we pray, like everything we're telling him, he already knows, right? Yeah. So God wants us to pray for us. Like it makes us feel better after we, like, after you've been able to, because I know I like, I I envision me bringing the situation to the throne of God. Like I envision that. And when I can, can open my eyes or get up and say, okay, I've taken it there. I can have peace. Mm -hmm. Like he knows what it would do for us, <clears throat> excuse me, to be able to pray and to communicate. Um, it, it's really for us. It's really for us. Yeah. And when you pray and you feel better, if you feel better, you're not going to get angry. You know, you're not going to allow that tsunami of emotion to cause you to do the thing that you originally wanted to do. There's there's one little ingredient for you to feel better. There's one little ingredient. How many of us we have a problem and we run to the we run to our knees and we just delve into the problem, right? Yeah. Lord, I don't know where you've been. But man, this thing is really, really heavy on my, my heart, right? Mm -hmm. And there's one little ingredient to twist it so that you'll leave your needs feeling better. Mm -hmm. And that is to start with worship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To start with worshiping, Lord, we've been here before. Right. Right. We've been here before. You, you've, 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 I remember when you, when the child had the diagnosis, we've been here before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember when I needed that job and I thought you, we've been here before. I, I remember when we had the immigration issue, you know, mm -hmm. we've been here before mm -hmm. and here we are again. Mm -hmm. but, but let me start with, thank you so much for mm -hmm. being there in the past, because mm -hmm. I know you'll be with me here today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, we need to start with worship. Mm -hmm. If we start with worship, and if your worship of God, that if, you're, if your worship of God mm -hmm. is vibrant enough and alive enough and real enough, you already start feeling better right. before you can bring up the issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so that, yeah. go ahead. Chris. I was just going to say there's a song that I like, and the, t it, the title is uh, Nothing Left to Prove, meaning like, God, you have nothing left to prove because of all the things that you've done for me in the past, even though I'm in a situation right now, your goodness and your mercy that you've shown me throughout my situations, um, you know, lead me to believe that you don't have anything else to prove. You're going to, however you're going to do it, bring me through this too. And that can be that anger in that moment. Absolutely. So God has nothing left to prove. Yeah. He's been, he's that good. And that's part of the praise and, and, and worship. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I want to add to that, that altar of incense. Remember Jesus said something about your enemies, right? Those who despitefully use you, right? What did he say to do with, with those enemies? Pray do about those them. enemies. Pray for them. He said, pray for them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pray for them. And a lot of times, that's why we're like, yeah, <laughs> I'm not going to pray right now mm -hmm. because I just want to be mad mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. angry. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. yeah, it's that's the thing. And, you know, when when we when we're unwilling to do that, to pray for our enemies mm -hmm. like Jesus did on the cross, um, you know, this is God showing us, this is how much more you need to be like me. Right. I mean, but think about that calling, man. Think about that calling, pray for your enemies. Yeah. Like, think about what kind of heart transformation is required for mm -hmm. you to do that. You know, mm -hmm. um, you know, that, that, that's, that's amazing. Let, let me get out of my, and so now you really see the process. You really see the process because you see what did Jesus do on the cross? Mm -hmm. Father, forgive, forgive them. them. For they, know yeah. they know not what they do. Yes. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For they know not what to do. And mm -hmm. again, you see then at the labor dying to self. You see why you got to die to self. What mm -hmm. death, death to self reminds you, it's not about me. Mm -hmm. It's not about me. And I, it's very important for us to say, and we're not talking about suicide here. This mm -hmm. is almost like death to self is the, is the opposite of suicide. Right, mm -hmm. right. It's life. Life. It's 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 life it and life, life more abundantly. Mm -hmm. Yes, because suicide is a focus on self. Right. No, this is a no. This is a death to self. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is a be death to my motivations and my things, so that God's motivations can live. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. it's preparation for Lord. How would you use me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's not about me using myself. Then mm -hmm. now you're informed by the word. Now you're informed by the word and yeah. then you're brought to, okay, you know what? Now I can pray for this person. Mm -hmm. I can pray for this person because it's not even about me. Mm -hmm. and, and Jesus did this before. So right. it's a very practical process. When this we, is the intro. <laughs> Go mm -hmm. ahead. When I was going to say, when we think, you know, we're not on the cross like Jesus was, but even when Jesus was on the cross, right, going through his whole situation, um, like India, I think it was India who said Jesus prayed on the cross. Like he was in the midst of the worst temptation to get angry that we could ever, 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 ever go through. And in the midst of that, he prayed and he prayed for those who were crucifying him and his en enemies, which were the ones he came to save. But those who were hurting him, yeah. I should say, yeah. And I think it's interesting where the, where the, Laver, I mean, sorry, where the altar of incense is, mm -hmm. because it's almost like God is saying, This is the heart of the issue, right? Right, yeah, and it really is. It, it's it's interesting because you don't start at the altar of at the at the uh, altar of incense, no, That's we don't it. have power to start there, mm -hmm. so it. God has to train us. He's like, Okay, uh, year one, this <laughs> is a class on, on, the, on the altar of sacrifice, we're gonna study it. Da, da, da. All right, in your in your uh, sophomore year, we're gonna graduate <laughs> to the you know to the labor. Right. This is how, and then in your junior year, you're getting into the table of showbread. You're you're getting mature now. Yeah. But all that is to prepare you, you. because scene. it's hard to pray for your enemies. That's it's profound, hard. bro. It's hard. Mm -hmm. So profound. it's almost like these articles of furniture beforehand are preparing you to get to that place. Mm -hmm. By by the time you do the work, you recognize that's not even your enemy. Yeah. Right. That's not even that's not even your enemy. Um and and what's what's interesting about when Christ prays on the cross, he's literally ministering to his father. Mm -hmm. He's literally ministering to his father. He is seeing his father suffering. He is understanding. My father is probably thinking about destroying you all right now. Mm -hmm. It's a thought on his mind. And he may be wondering where I am. Have I forgotten the mission? And he ministers to him. Father, forgive them. Why would he say that if it's not necessary? Mm -hmm. Father, forgive them. Mercy. They know not what they do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's ministering. I mean, so look at where he is. I mean, he's such of an example, such of an example to us. Mm -hmm. And 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 then you know, you know, accepting the 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 thief on the cross. I mean, it 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 goes back to the cross, the cross and its shadows. Mm -hmm. These these articles of furniture, they're they're shadows of the yeah. cross. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and like you said, Ivor, with each rising furniture with each piece of furniture it's going up a notch yeah it's going up a notch we so take very, it. Very profound. Yeah. so so I, I, it sounds like we're going to start you know kind of winding down at this point but to whet you guys's appetite we we got to answer the question where are some pivotal moments that prayer shows up okay where are some huge moments that that prayer um shows up and then we also have to think about um meditation and prayer mm -hmm. you know meditation and prayer how are they linked mm -hmm. you know where is faith in this discussion mm -hmm. so, so those are some very powerful themes for us to unpack in in in, in the part two segment um mm -hmm. dealing with prayer the altar of incense mm -hmm.
Yeah. Amen. That's going to be very powerful. Yep. It's going to be very powerful. Um, this was praise God. And, you know, when you took that drink of water, I just thought like, you're not sneezing. <laughs> so he already answered that prayer, but that was, uh, that was a blessing. But uh, this whole uh, program this morning was a blessing and, um, Share it. You, yeah, if you, share if you it. know people who are struggling with with anger, um, share the share this series with them. Mm -hmm. um, that's the beautiful thing about the you know about the internet is like it's up here. It's so easy. It, yeah, that's how you can witness. It's Just so easy. Send is there a mechanism for them to like register their emails on the website somehow? Is there any way for them to sign up for a newsletter or anything like that? Um, I believe when they sign that, up for Alter Live, I think. Yeah, we capture can capture their email information. I think. But By the way, can, yeah, can we put the website? Let's put the website in the comments and also the link for Alter Live, in case um, uh, there are people that want to get on Alter Live and and actually be able to have the after sermon discussion to be a right. part of that discussion. So let's put both those links up. And while uh, I think Patrice might be doing that, let, let me just um, say, if if there's not that link or that capability, it will be created this week yeah. <laughs> so that we're able to capture that. Because I think, uh, Dr. White, did you have notes that you wanted to be able Cause, to? Because we, we want to send out some notes mm -hmm. to those on the email list. That's yes. what we want to do. We want to send out some notes kind of summarizing some of the key concepts Mm -hmm. That's that's a reward that we want to provide for those of you that are on the email list on our newsletter. So um, so keep if you can do it on the website, so be it. But um, stay tuned to how you can get on that list because we want you to um, be able to benefit from from that with some notes um, uh, from this awesome discussion. Yeah, they Listen. can see they can send. I don't want to overwhelm Patrice here, but I'm about to say they can send um their email or saying just put in like requesting notes like send an email to patrice at livingmana.live yeah um and then she could forward that to us and we can get those notes out to people who want it and i think charles was saying we could also put it on the youtube channel so there's different ways we'll work it out just yes, we'll, different ways. uh i would say don't even email patrice because she'll be overwhelmed with okay. <laughs> trying yeah. to respond to Sorry, each of you individually Patrice. Sorry. Right. We're gonna we're gonna work it out to where those who want will make an announcement. Uh, those who want the uh, the the sum, the summary of everything we've talked about will get your email address. We'll find we'll uh, create a way to capture your email address and we'll get that to you. Right. I think that uh, um, both of you should actually talk about uh, what's coming on May 9th in case we haven't announced it, just so that right. people know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So May 9th, uh, we're going to be starting Mental Health Mondays. And myself and Dr. White are um, going to be the host. And our, uh, so it's May 9th, and it starts at 7 p.m. Central Time. Um, and our first topic that we're going to, to tackle is anxiety. Um, and I know many of you are familiar with anxiety um, and what it does. And so we're going to talk about that. Um, and we're going to be taking your questions, um, which, yeah, we're going to be taking your questions. Right yeah. now, we are saying that this program will be an hour and no longer. <laughs> but um, And it's every Monday. Every Monday. Right. Every, Monday. every Monday. Yes, every right. Monday. So um, what you can also do, I mean, for those of you, hopefully you've been, you know, our, our website, uh, but it's livingmana.live or livingmana.church. And that is where you can get information uh, for the things that are going on. And I just had saw scrolling across the screen um, that, okay, yeah, you can go to livingmana.church or .live to, um, to get more information. And some of you are asking about your membership and it was scrolling. If you want to become a member um, of the church, and, if, and I saw things earlier, if you want to be able to give, uh, mm -hmm. to, to give your tithe, to give your offering, you can go to livingmana. Uh, dot live there. You can click on that link and that's how you can um, uh, give your, your tithe and offering through Adventist giving. There's some, there's a, a link for tithe. Um, and there's also a link uh, for your offering on that Adventist giving uh, link, which is on the website. So visit our website to be able to do that 
um, as well. So yeah, May 9th is um, Mental Health Mondays. And so we're looking forward to that and talking about anxiety. Dr. White, do you want to say anything about that? And anxiety, the most common, you know, psychiatric uh, diagnosis. So yeah. something incredibly relevant uh, to the population. And yeah, come with your questions, you know. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so we can't, we can't wait the fellowship with you in that context. Right. And those who are subscribed to Living Mana uh, uh, channel and Power of the Lamb channel will get the notifications when we are going live. So that is how you will uh, be able to watch. Yeah. Alicia, I see your comment there. If, uh, if you can send, I don't know if you sent an email to Patrice at livingmana.live. Um, if you have, I mean, we've been flooded with emails, but if you could just send another one. Yeah. We will look out for you specifically, okay? okay. Um, yes, uh, Gigi, I see, I see you, I see you, I see you were with us all Wednesday, Wednesday evening. Um, I see a bunch of other stuff that we can't even really comment on right now because no. we're out of time. We but time. Uh, uh, Atanta, I don't know if you want to close out and pray or Dr. White, and then we're gonna uh, we'll keep this link up and we'll see you in a few minutes. Yes. Definitely don't go away. The intermission is not one of those walk away intermissions. I mean, we have uh, evangelist Taj Pakleb that's going to be sharing a powerful uh, mess, a, a very powerful, I don't seem like it's a message, like it's a sermon, but a very powerful thought that is going to um, touch your life. So we definitely want you to stay tuned for that um, and uh, not go away. And so let's pray. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for uh, just the power that you uh, give to us, the power through your word, Lord, the power in prayer, uh, what that does for us when we are tempted by that tsunami of emotion of anger, Lord. We just pray as we have been trying to go through these practical steps um, that everyone that uh, watches or is watching now and will watch uh, will be able to apply uh, these principles into their lives, Lord, because it is so real and so life-changing. Uh, we just ask that your Holy Spirit will continue to be with us um, as we continue to worship throughout the divine worship service. We thank you so much for everything you have done and do for us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Always a pleasure, guys. God bless. Yes. All amen. right. Amen. God bless. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. of Oahu, about a third of a mile off the shores of Kualoa Beach, we found a very famous island called Mokoli'i, most commonly known as China Manhattan. I've lived in Hawaii all my life, but I've never taken the time to explore this tiny island, so I'm stoked to be able to do it today. You see, one of my favorite sayings in life is this, blessed are the curious, for they shall always have adventures, and blessed are the adventurers, for they shall always have great pictures to show and awesome stories to tell. You see, my friends, this life is full of awesome discoveries and new adventures every single day but in order to find them we got to be willing to get off the couch get out of the house and start living our lives in the real world instead of the artificial world of hollywood movies and social media one person said it like this you can't discover new oceans unless you're willing to lose sight of the shore and that my friends is the truth those who choose to spend their lives on the shores of complacency and comfort often miss out on the oceans of adventure and the islands of experience. So it's either you launch out or you miss out. And for me, I don't wanna miss out on anything. So today we're going to explore more as we launch out to see what's happening on China Manhattan. Now this island obviously got its nickname due to its likeness to the rice hats of Asia. Now these Asian rice hats are not the most fashionable, they're definitely practical. And in my opinion, practical is more important than fashionable, especially on a hot Hawaiian day like today. You see, the conical shape of these hats is such that it provides a nice shade from the sun and even a small shelter from the rain. In the rice fields of Asia, it protects the farmers from getting toasted from the powerful rays of the sun. But these hats are not only helpful in Asia, I'm finding it very useful on a hot summer day like today. <laughs> 
Etoya fio my Yesu. Ola tamaile aso. Etoya fio my Yesu. As beautiful as it is, this island just doesn't have much when it comes to shade. A bunch of bushes, a few coconut trees here and there. It's just like the top of an Asian rice hat. It absorbs all the heat of the afternoon sun. You see, just as my Asian rice hat has provided shade from the hot Hawaiian sun, so too does our God cover us from the sun of trial and the heat of hardship. The Bible says that the Lord is your keeper and your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. For he has been a stronghold to the poor and to the needy, a shelter from the storm and a shade from the heat. Now God doesn't stop the sun of trial from shining. He didn't promise that life would always be cool and refreshing and easy. But he did promise to preserve us in pain, to cover us in conflict, and to shield us in sorrow. He has pledged to us his holy word that when things begin to heat up in our lives, that he is our shade by day, our defense by night, and a shelter in the time of storm. And as long as we remain under his covering, we will be able to rise above the heat of this world and stand at the top of the mountain of victory. We will then trade our China man's hats for a royal diadem, a crown of everlasting life. And then we will rise from this earthly paradise to the sweet paradise of God.
Happy Sabbath and welcome to Living Mana Seventh-day Adventist Church. We are so happy to see that you are here with us today. We're excited that you're worshiping with us. Worshiping with us. If you were not uh, here for Sabbath school, as I always say, you missed a treat. But the good thing is, is that you can always go back and watch it later. We did our fourth part um, of the uh, Sabbath school series on anger and walking through the sanctuary to see what the answers God has for us on how we can handle, uh, like I like to say, that tsunami of emotion. So I don't want to go into all the things you missed, but you missed some great stuff. And so you're going to want to go back um, and watch it later. And so it was really a blessing to have Dr. White on again. And we look forward as we do part two um, uh, in the sanctuary of, um, of the altar of incense. So it was our fourth part, uh, but we have a part two to the altar of incense. And so you're not going to want to miss that. Um, it's, it's talking about prayer um, and the power of prayer and what it can do when you're having that negative emotion of anger. So um, we are just, again, thankful that you are here and worshiping with us. We know that this online uh, church uh, for many, um, because of the pandemic, is not completely new, um, but this is how we're moving forward. And we are wanting uh, to reach as many people as we can in the world. And we just believe that, that God has given us this opportunity to use uh, the vehicle of, of social media and online uh, to be able to reach people that we may not be able to reach um, by just knocking on their door, just because they are actually, we're actually knocking on their hearts right here where they are um, online. And people are all around uh, the world as Many of you know, when we log on, we have viewers from all around the world. And yes, we want our fellow uh, Seventh-day Adventists to join us and be a part of this uh, journey with us. But we also want to reach those who would never step foot um, in a church um, or they just have no desire, no interest. But but they're online and they might see something about the living man of Seventh-day Adventist church and think like, okay, um, I might check it out. I mean, I don't have to go out of my comfort zone. I could uh, be watching online um, and be learning about God that way. So that is our goal is to minister to our, our church family, but also to our family that we don't know who they are. Um, they're just out there. And again, people that would just never step foot in a church. And so that is our goal. And we want you to go on this journey with us through by praying for us as you have been. Thank you so much for your prayers. Um, also um, by your um, love gifts, your offerings and, and things of, of that nature that also helps us to be able to do this. And we just thank you so much for those of you who have contributed in that way through prayer, through giving. Um, we are wanting and planning to do big things. As many of you know, uh, we don't just do Sabbath. Um, we have... Um, programs planned all throughout the week. Um, and so our first one that will be starting May 9th is um, Mental Health Mondays. And it will be myself and Dr. White who will be hosting that. We'll have other guests and we'll have various topics. Um, but our first topic is on anxiety. And so that's what we're going to be covering on May 9th. And I know that it's not going to just be May 9th. We're going to be covering it several weeks after May 9th. But uh, the awesome thing is that we're taking uh, your questions. Uh, we're giving you uh, some facts about that topic. And then we want to hear from you. We want to take your questions. And so uh, if you have a friend who um, you've never been able to invite to church, but you can say, hey, but you know that they might connect with that topic. Um, you can say, hey, tune in to Mental Health Mondays. Um, this is what my church, uh, the church that I view very often is talking about. And that's an easy way for you to be able to share. We're also um, talking about uh, physical health. And we have two amazing doctors, a naturopathic doctor, Dr. Reynolds and Dr. Schweltz. These are amazing doctors and they're going to have their their own program and they're going to be teaching us about how we can take care of this temple that God has given to us. We have Dr. Pandit, who many of you um, have seen on here, um, and he's going to be talking about, you know, the how we can witness to people, right? Or how can we prove the existence of God 
without using the Bible. Um, and so that was his journey on how he really found God and got connected with God. And he's going to be sharing that. And so that's going to be powerful. That's, that's one evening. And how can I forget? We also have Power Wednesdays, which is going to be uh, a prayer uh, service. And and we have um, Brother Terry Sowell, who will be leading us out in that. And that's going to be powerful. And so we just um, look forward uh, to all the things that God is leading us to do with this church, with this ministry. And without your prayers and your financial gifts, it would not be possible. Um, this was just a thought, a dream. And um, by the grace of God and by the Northeastern Conference and through, again, your prayers and your support, um, this has become a reality. And so we just praise God uh, for that. Uh, many of you, and I think it's scrolling on the screen now, are always asking, how can we give? And um, you can go to our website, livingmana.live or livingmana.church. And you just click on tithe and offerings. And there you will see a virtual uh, tithe envelope show up and you're able to give your tithe and your offerings. The offering goes to the, um, the, the Living Man of Church and the operations. Your tithe goes to the Northeastern Conference to support the world uh, church. Um, as you know, the Seventh-day Adventist Church is all around the world and does amazing things all around the world. And so we want to continue to support the World Church um, and also what's going on here um, at Living Managed Church. And so those are the ways you can give. You can also mail in a check if you don't want to give online. You can mail in a check um, and that goes to P.O. Box 428 Owens Crossroads, Alabama 35763. Again, that's P.O. Box 428, Owens Crossroads, Alabama, 35763. Uh, so those are all the ways you can give and support the ministry. And again, we appreciate your prayers and your um, financial gifts. Continue to pray for the ministry. Um, again, this is all new. And Satan tries to have uh, his way. The way he tries to attack is make you know, things go wrong so that like we can't actually broadcast um, on a Sabbath morning. But we know that through prayer and God is more powerful uh, than the devil. And so we just we just really uh, covet your prayers and appreciate them. At this time, I'd like to bring on our prayer leader, Terry Sowell. Hey, Brother Terry, happy Sabbath. I think you're I think you're on mute. I hope I think I have you on mute. Okay, okay there you go. All right. We can Good morning. Hear you now. Happy, happy Sabbath, Sister Atante, and to everyone watching around the world. Yes, happy Sabbath. Good to hear your voice. I know last week um, you asked for uh, some, some people who might want to assist you in the prayer ministry, and you've gotten a lot of response. Tell us just a little bit about that before we go into prayer. Well, yeah, we got some emails from some people who have been involved in prayer ministry and in prison ministry. And uh, so we got an opportunity to respond to them. And I, I mean, there was a lot of good enthusiasm and we praise God for that. But you know what? We're, we're still seeking to build a strong team of prayer warriors here at Living Manor. And, and, and I've just been watching the chat. There's a couple of names I want to mention. We haven't really connected, but uh, Lynette Gooding and Janelle Sagara, Michelle Watson Grant, and Zianda, I don't want to mess up her name, Ms. Shantishi Dewey. She, these people are praying for people and they're just in the chat and I see them and I'm thinking, wow, mm -hmm. these, these, these ladies are really getting busy and they're prayer warriors and they're lifting up some of the prayer requests that we see going to. So I really want to acknowledge them. Everyone may not get involved, but God has his warriors, you know, un mm -hmm. unsung heroes they are called sometimes. They're in the trenches and they're praying for people. So I just want to acknowledge them. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. And there's been a lot of prayer requests, even before we actually, um, we were on our break in between Sabbath school and church. I saw a lot of prayer requests being added and I encourage you to continue to add your prayer requests again, as uh, brother Terry will be praying. Um, he's not going to see it right at that time, but he will just lift up the prayer requests that are in the chat. And so God knows specifically who that is and what um, you're going through and what your situation is. So put your prayer request in the chat. Uh, the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit will take those requests right to the throne of God as Brother Terry is praying. 
So at this time, we want to just usher in prayer because we know that that's, that's what we all need. Amen. Well, precious Father, we do thank you today for the privilege of prayer. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your promises. We thank you for the power of your spirit, Lord, working in and through us. We don't even know what to pray for as we ought to, but thank you, God, that even in our infirmities, even in our ignorance and lack of knowing, your spirit makes intercession for us with groanings that are too deep to be uttered. And Lord, as we draw near to your throne of grace today, God, in order that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need, God, we just thank you by faith that you are greater than every obstacle, every mountain, every barrier, every hill. Lord God, even those dark valleys, we thank you, God, that you're also the God of the valleys and that you're able, Lord God, to do exceeding abundantly above anything that we could ever ask or think. And so today we start off by giving you praise. We start off by giving you glory and by giving you honor, Lord, that you are the God of heaven and earth. You brought us through, Lord God, so much. We've heard stories of your victories and of your conquerors and how many times you brought people through, Lord. We know if you did it, then you'll still do it again because you are the same yesterday, today and forever. Lord, we want to thank you for what you've been doing in the area of anger and where you've been educating us in anger so that we're not ambushed. And we just pray that as your people continue to study and to continue to come to the uh, Sabbath school and lessons and listen to Dr. White and Sister Ritante and the pastor discuss these issues that, Lord, you are fortifying the hearts and minds of believers and strengthening them in their walk with you and making them aware. And as they study and grow and practice these things and get them at an instinctive level, Lord, that that would be our response. We'll always want to turn to you and pray. We'll always want to seek, Lord God, the options, the the other the answer that's always there that you've provided. And so we give you glory and praise as you're renewing our minds and renewing our hearts and giving us new ways of thinking and making us wise at how we to handle anger. And thank you for teaching us to hold our tongues too in Jesus' name, God. And then, Lord, in the, there are those who are dealing with other issues other than just um, uh, anger, Lord. We have financial issues and folk who are dealing with surgery. And Tavon Moore is asking for fin uh, uh, assistance and in, in, uh, with his financial issues and having come through back surgery. We pray you give him swift healing and strengthening in his body, oh, Lord God, that he might be able to get on his feet and do what he needs to do for his family. Lord, we're praying for... Uh, Sister Rhonda, whose daughter needs physical healing today, we know that you are uh, the God who heals, Lord. We know that there's nothing for you to heal. Raise her up, we pray in Jesus' name. Father, and we want to pray for Jesus' bride, who, whose sons, uh, Moses and Elijah, are dealing with... Uh, uh, some issues there dealing with autism, Lord God, and 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 what he believes to be as some spiritual issues. We pray, God, you are almighty and all powerful, and Lord, there's nothing too hard for you. Touch these precious boys' lives, these beautiful children, Lord God, and, and raise them up, Lord God, and let them be them the, the, become the men and the lights that will shine for you in advancing your kingdom. We give you glory and honor and praise for that. And Lord, we want to pray for Sister Pauline Goodline, who's asking prayer requests for brother Elijah, I mean, Isaiah, Lord. And uh, we just want to trust you and trust that into your hand and lift it up. And all the other prayer requests that may come through the chat, we just pray, Lord, give your people confidence to go ahead and write that in there. And we'll, we'll definitely be interceding and standing in the gap for them, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and for your mercy. Heal, touch, save, and deliver today in Jesus' name. And then, Lord, we want to thank you as we lift up our tithes and offerings before you, Lord God, and trust, Lord, that you will move on the hearts of your people, Lord, in miraculous ways. Lord God, we play we pray bless the tithes and bless the offerings, Lord, for the advancement of your kingdom, that Living Manor Church will be able to fulfill its mission. Lord, we have absolutely no fear at all. We have absolute confidence in you. You said you are the Lord, our God, that gives us power to get wealth in order that we might establish you might establish your covenant with us. And God, we know you have a covenant that we would take this everlasting gospel to the world, Lord God. Living Manor Church, Father, thank you so much that you're allowing her to meet, to reach people in places that our local churches could never go. And we thank you for this, Lord God, the way you're going right into the, to the homes and right into the living rooms and right into the bedrooms even, Lord. 
of folk, Lord God, and touching them. And I thank you that the, the chat even reflects that a lot of times as lights go on. And I'm reading messages of how folks said, that's deep. I never thought about it that way. You're reaching us, Lord, and we thank you for it in Jesus' mighty name, God. Thank you that you're reaching people in a place where they don't have to pretend. They don't have to put on a good look and a good face. They can sit right in their home, in their comfort zone, and get the word of God right where they need it. And so we just praise you for that in Jesus' name. Bless the tithes and the offerings. Bless those who are giving, Lord God. Continue to increase their seed. They can give more and more for the kingdom of God. And we just give you praise and honor for that. I want to thank you also for Blade of Hope, uh, who today we're uh, publicly offering up or consecrating 77.7 .7 acres of property you've given us, O oh Lord, uh, for the first Seventh-day Adventist transition home in California. We thank you for that. It's a miracle, a vision and a dream that, that, that was birthed behind prison walls, and now we're seeing the manifestation of it. You can do anything but fail, God, and we give you praise, glory, and honor for what you're in the process of doing right now, what you've done, and what we're confident you will continue to do in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Search me.
Aloha. We hope you're blessed by the message of that special song. A song that was inspired by the ancient prayer of King David. A prayer that has deep relevance for us today. You see, today we live in a world that is divided, whose favorite sport is the blame game. Human beings have become experts in discerning the faults and failures of others. We sit back with keyboard courage and throw accusations at each other, typing things that we normally wouldn't say in person. Why? Because it's far easier to hide behind a screen than it is to stand in front of a mirror. It is far easier to throw stones than it is to build bridges. But today, the Lord of love is calling us to stop focusing on the problems without and start examining the heart issues within, to take inventory of our own lives and personal responsibility for our own choices. The message of the song directs our thoughts to the omniscient God, the one whose eyes run to and fro throughout the earth, the one who sees what happens behind closed doors and knows what goes on in the dark. He knows our deepest thoughts and is acquainted with our most intimate feelings. He reads our lives like an open book and he knew us even from our mother's womb. He knows the deepest, the darkest, and the dirtiest secrets of our lives. And yet, though he knows all of this, his thoughts toward us are still thoughts of infinite love, more in number than the sand of the sea. As I walk upon the Hawaiian seashore today and look upon the innumerable grains of sand, I cannot help but be overwhelmed by the extravagant love of God for someone like me. It is absolutely mind-blowing to realize that despite my failures and my foolishness, that Jesus still thought enough about me to hang on Calvary's cross to take away my sin. That despite the pain I caused him, he still desires a forever friendship with me. And my friend, the same is true for you today. The one that knows you the very best is the one that loves you the very most. You are fully known and fully loved by him. And there's nothing that you've done or ever can do to change the way that God feels about you. And when you come to see the truth of this reality, it gives you the confidence to look deeper within your own sin polluted heart knowing that there is nothing there that is too filthy for the blood of Jesus to cleanse, nothing there that is too corrupt and crooked for the Holy Spirit to straighten out. And that's why the psalmist, instead of looking outwardly, he looked inward and he prayed, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. When you are confident in God's unfailing love for you, you will then have the boldness to confront all the inward issues that are holding you back in life. You will cease to play the blame game and you will forsake the victim mentality. You will no longer hide behind the filters of self-righteousness and the mass of pseudo-moralism. You will allow the Lord of love to purge your sin and cover you with genuine righteousness that will enable you to fight the good fight of faith with Jesus. Tested, tried, and purified enduring to the end that we all might be saved. Glory to His holy name. So go ahead and take a deeper look. Beyond the outward symptoms of polarizing politics, confusing conspiracies, and one-sided news narratives, let God take you to the heart of the issue, the real place where lasting change is found. And as you do, know that God is here, right by your side. He is unfailing love for you. Hold on to His word. For his word is not like the empty political promises made every four years. God's word is true. He will never leave nor forsake you. Now as we trust in him, he will lead us through the chaos and into the promised land together. And when we all get to heaven, there will be no left or right, but only those whose lives are centered in the one that cleanses us with the red of his precious blood and covers us with the blue of his righteous law that we might stand as his royal purple people children of the heavenly king there to dwell in the kingdom of glory forever and my god's grace will meet you in that royal kingdom above
All right. There we go. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Amen, amen, amen. Um, hopefully you all can hear me. Put a one in the chat if you could hear me. Um, I'm excited about today's message. Uh, looking forward to uh, a powerful blessing that God is going to pour out on, upon us today. I want you, as I'm preaching this message today, I want you to pray for me um, because uh, as I shared a little bit earlier, uh, I've been struggling with allergies. So uh, I pray that, uh, or you pray for me, please, that my voice uh, will, will hold out um, and that this message will come across the way that God intends it to. And so, as you all know, we have been looking at the dangers of eating fast foods and the benefits of living manna. We're going to conclude this message today with the final three benefits of living manna. And truthfully, we can't even say that it is the final three because the benefits of eating, eating living manna are innumerable. But these are the 12 that I have chosen, and we will conclude this message today with a very special appeal at the end of this message. So please, please, please uh, pray that you have open and ready hearts to receive what the Lord has to share with us today. Let's go ahead and pray, and then we're going to jump in. Heavenly Father, we're asking in a special way that you would please speak to our hearts today, Lord. Please Lord, pour out your spirit. Lord, you know all that has uh, occurred this week. You know the sleepless nights uh, of this week. Lord, I pray that you would hide me behind the cross, Lord, and that you would take this message into your hands. And may it bless your people is my prayer in Jesus' name. May it bless those who are watching, those who may have never heard of Jesus, those who may be wondering, should they give Jesus a try? Those who are seasoned in following Christ, but still struggle for some reason, Lord, I pray that every aspect may be addressed as we share the word of God today. We pray it as uh, we pray it in the precious and holy name of Jesus, that everyone say amen and amen. And so if you can, I'd like for you to put in the chat the nine benefits we have covered so far. And I'm going to connect with those benefits. I'm going to uh, mention those benefits now. But we have learned that living manna produces strength. That's, that's the first thing we learned. Living manna produces strength. It strengthens us to be able to pick up the cross and follow Christ. Living manna is, is the symbol of the word of God and ultimately of Jesus Christ himself. So we learned, number one, that living manna gives us strength. And we saw that the reason why many of us do not have strength to resist temptation, to resist sin, is because we have been feeding on a fast food diet, a quick study of the word of God. We want quick sermons our way, right away, and we don't want to go deep into the word of God. We don't want the word of God to, 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 to penetrate into the deepest parts of ourselves. We are, we are, we are uh, uh, um, content with fast food word. We also saw that living manna produces endurance. We were told not only that as Christians we must pick up the cross, but we must carry the cross. There are many people who can pick up the cross on certain days, and on other days they have no endurance. We saw that eating living manna provides endurance for those who choose to follow Christ, that we can last through various situations and not give up the faith because the word of God enables us. The word of God endures forever. We also saw that living manna enhances the mind. It helps us to think clearer and to understand deeper. It, it helps us to see 
uh, 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 that which we uh, may not have understood for living manna, number one, produces strength. Number two, it enhances endurance. Number three, it enhances the mind. And then we saw in our second message that living manna was a powerful antioxidant. Put a one in the chat if you remember that. Living manna is a powerful antioxidant. And what that means is that living manna is able to capture free radical thoughts. The word of God is able to capture free radical thoughts and bring it into captivity to Jesus Christ. That's what we learned. That's what we learned. The word of God is a powerful antioxidant and it gathers up all those free radicals that seek to do damage to us personally. We also saw that living manna was a powerful antidepressant. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The more manna we eat, actual manna, not fast food manna, not cheap manna, but actual manna, the more we eat of the word of God, the happier we will be. Despite the challenges and the trials around us, we can actually maintain our peace in the midst of the storm. We also saw that living manna was an anti-inflammatory, meaning that living manna was able to keep us from being inflamed, inflamed passions and desires. Living manna taught us how to fight against the inflammation of the devil and how to, how to avoid uh, uh, his traps of anger and, and, and his traps of, 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 li of pride, of lifting oneself up, of puffing oneself up. We saw in our third message that living manna was a powerful, it powerfully reverses heart disease. We learned last week that, 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 that all of humanity struggles with heart disease, but the word of God promises to give us a new heart. If we actually eat the living manna, if we actually partake, not just chew uh, uh, quickly and swallow, but, 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 do slowly that the nutrition from that is that is uh, within living manna would go deep into our bodies, spiritual bodies, and produce amazing results. We saw that living manna not only reverses heart disease, but that living at manna boosts the immune system. We saw that when you're not, when you don't, when you have a weak immune system, you catch everything and everything the world has to offer. We just go along with it. Well, living manna uh, enables, it protects us. It, it empowers our immune system to keep us from being sick with the devil's cold. We saw last week that many Christians are suffering from colds. They're walking around with colds, cold to the word of God, cold to the fire of God, cold to the passion of God. But we saw that living manna, when we eat it, it becomes like fire in our bones and, and, it, and, it, and it strengthens our immune system and helps us not to catch the viruses and the diseases of the enemy. And finally, we saw one of the most powerful things that living manna is an anti-venom or an anti-venom. We saw that, that science is learning. Science has learned in the last uh, 50 years that sheep's blood is one of the most powerful anti-venom for the serpent. When you're bitten by a serpent, it is sheep's blood that produces antibodies. When that venom is put within the sheep, <clears throat> the sheep produces antibodies that saves us from the bite of the serpent. And we, we grew to understand <clears throat> that Christ's death on the cross was to provide us powerful anti-venom, powerful antibodies to fight the serpent's sting. So what are we going to learn today? We're going to learn today of three more benefits, the three that will conclude this series. And, and the first of th these three benefits, we may say benefit number 10 of the 12, or benefit, yeah, benefit number 10 of the 12. Let's begin with Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, before I tell you what that benefit is. The Bible says in Genesis 2, 15, And the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God said, The Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that you eat thereof, Thou shalt surely, what? Die. 
Ever since man ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, death has become the lot of mankind. And, and in order to get to death, because sin entered, mankind grows old. We age. We grow old and then we die. You see it there in Genesis 5, verse 5. And all the days that Adam lived were 930 years and he died. He died. He got old. Listen, nobody really enjoys getting old because getting old, what begins to happen? Come on, y'all, put it in the chat. What begins to happen? The older we grow, <clears throat> what do we begin to experience? More pain. More aches. Yes? We begin to lose our vision. Yeah? How many of you uh, wear glasses? Come on, y'all. Yeah, I, I, uh, I'm at that place where Sometimes I pull the glasses out, and sometimes I try to do without it. <laughs> but, but, but we become weaker. We, 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 we lose our vision. We lose our hearing. Uh, we begin to get wrinkles. Put a one in the chat if you hate your wrinkles. Come on, somebody. Put, put a one in the chat if you hate your wrinkles. Put a one in the chat if you hate wearing your glasses. We, in essence, deteriorate. <laughs> we grow old. We get pains and aches. We begin to lose our vision. We begin to lose our hearing. We begin to get wrinkles. And then comes death. And it is not a pleasant process. But what if I told you, what if I told you, come on, somebody, what if I told you that there was a food that could help? What if I told you that there was a food that was so powerful, it could be that elusive fountain of youth that so many are searching for? What if I told you that? How would you feel if I told you that there was a food, that there was a food that was the most powerful anti-aging element on the earth. Benefit number 10, y'all. Living manna is an anti-aging food. Put a one in the chat if that makes you interested in eating living manna. Come on. I, I, you're saying, Pastor, what do you mean living manna is an anti-aging food? What are you talking about? Well, let me explain it to you this way. In Matthew 18 and verse 1, the Bible says, At that time came, G came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called, uh, called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them and said, Verily I say unto you, except you be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. How many of you understand that what Jesus is saying here is that I don't care how old you are. I don't care if you're 50 or 80 or 90. If you want to enter the kingdom of heaven, you must reverse your aging. Put a one in the chat if you caught what I just said. You've got to reverse your aging. You have to become like a little child. The word of God, beloved, enables us to reverse age. You say, Pastor, well, well, well how does it do that? Well, well, here's a question. Uh, uh, you remember that, that Nicodemus had this same question. Y'all remember that? Put, put a five in the chat if you remember Nicodemus's question. He was asking the same thing. Listen to what the Bible says. John 3, verse 3. 
Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time in his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Watch this. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. Are y'all getting this? Nicodemus wants to know, how can I be young again? How can I? I I'm old. Jesus, I don't understand what you're saying. What do you mean we must be born again? Jesus says you must be born of the spirit. Well, what is he saying when he says you must? What does he mean? Well, check this out. In John 5, verse 56, the Bible says he, Jesus speaking, he that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and I in him. As the living father has sent me and I live by the father, so he that eateth me he shall live by me. Watch. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. Verse 60, the Bible says, many therefore of the disciples, many therefore the disciples, when they had heard this, said, this is a hard saying. Who can hear it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, does this offend you? What if you shall see the Son of Man ascending where he was before? Watch this. Verse 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. <clears throat> the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are. So if Jesus said, listen. You must be born of the spirit. And then he says in John 6, the words that I speak to you are spirit and life. Listen, when I say eat my flesh and drink my blood, manna, bread, I'm not talking about my literal flesh and blood. I'm talking about the, the life that I gave for you and the words that I speak to you. They are spirit and they are life. In other words, when we eat the word of God, it makes us younger and younger and younger and younger and younger. We become born again. It reverses everything that came before us eating it. Are y'all catching what I'm saying? It is by the word of God that we grow young. By the word of God that we become children again, that we are born again. It is by eating his words that we reverse in age. Listen, just let me prove it to you. First Peter chapter 22, chapter one, verse 22. Seeing you have purified your soul in obeying the truth through the spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which lived and abided forever. What did y'all see that? It is the word of God that leads us to be born again. It is by the word of God that we are born again. The genuine word of God. When you genuinely study the word of God, when you're not just fast fooding the word of God, when you're genuinely eating the word of God <clears throat> and taking in the word of God, it is going to lead you to experience a new birth. Listen to this. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter six and verse six, and I'm going to read that first and I'll come to this. Knowing that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth, henceforth we should not serve sin. So the Bible tells us that the old man is crucified with Christ. Now, where was Christ crucified? Come on, help me out in the chat. Where was he crucified? He was crucified at Calvary, yes? Remember what Jesus said about the living bread? He said in John, and I believe it's verse 53, he says there that I am the living bread and the life that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the world. 
So, beloved, it is by picking up the cross and going to the place of bread that we learned about in the very first sermon, Calvary, the place of bread, the place of living manna. It is by going there that the word of God, in essence, crucifies the old man. Watch this. The word of God kills. Somebody put an amen in the chat to that, please. The word of God kills. It puts to death the old man. And this is why the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, it says, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing of soul and spirit. That's death, y'all. When you eat the word of God, it kills the old man, but brings birth to a new man. Come on. <laughs> Come on, you guys. Are you catching this? This is why the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. This is what God is desiring for us. He wants us to put away the old and to become new. And so here's the problem, you guys. <clears throat> if living manner is anti-aging, then we need to understand that eating fast foods only ages us faster. So think fast foods age fast. Anybody want to age fast? You know, when you're a kid and you don't know any better, you want to age fast. I can't wait. To... And then once you grow up, you realize, man, I wish I would have aged slower. Eating fast foods leads to aging fast. In fact, eating fast foods is not going to lead you to experience new birth. Let me call it this. When we eat fast foods, what ends up happening is what I'll call fast food conversions. Just put that in the chat, please. Fast food conversions. Fast food conversions. So, so what is that? It's you went into the watery grave, but you were buried alive. You really didn't get young again. It was a fast food conversion. You, were, you may have been baptized, but it was the same old you. <laughs> Did you catch that? It was the same old person. Baptism is not about going into the water to come out the same old person. When you go into the water, you want to come out as a new child, not an old you. Not the same old you with the same old prejudices and the same old attitudes and the same old sinful habits, but under a new disguise. God wants us to actually be spiritually born again. And so Romans 12, 2 tells us this, be not <coughs> conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You see, when we eat, when we, when we allow ourselves to be conformed to the world, we will grow old like the world. Doesn't the Bible say that? Doesn't the Bible say uh, 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 1 Peter chapter, chapter 2, chapter 1, verse 23? It says, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of the incorruptible uh, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. If the word of God abides forever, but in 1 John 2, 17, the Bible says the world passes away and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abide forever. I need you to understand that when we allow ourselves to be conformed to the world, we're going to wax old like the world. But if we allow ourselves to be conformed or transformed by the word, what happens is we become young again. Come on, y'all. How many of you want to become young again? How many of you want to become young again? A true, a true diet of living manna, not empty words, not sugary words, not words that are meant to, to excite, not words that are meant to, to play upon emotions, but a true, a true taking in of the word of God is going to lead you to the fountain of youth is going to lead you 
to be young again. Y'all want to be young again? One in the chat. Just put it, type it. I want to be young again. I want to be young again. The world is chasing after anti-aging foods. But listen, y'all, we got the, the major anti-aging food right here in the word of God. Now, now, here's another one you might hate. <clears throat> put a one in the chat if you hate your wrinkles. <laughs> I mean, yes, you want to love yourself, but you know those wrinkles, man. What life would be like to not have those wrinkles? You get old and, you know, you get these spots and, and blemishes and, and all these things going on. But what if I told you, beloved, that the word of God, eating the word of God will get rid of your wrinkles? <laughs> Come on, y'all. Listen, husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having what? Spot. Not having what? <laughs> Come on, y'all, wrinkles. <laughs> or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Come on, y'all. How many of you want to get rid of those blemishes, get rid of those wrinkles, get rid of those spots? Listen, living manna is a beauty food, y'all. Living manna is going to make you beautiful. Living manna is going to make you young again. Living manna, beloved, is going to do this for you. But listen and look. Yes, yes, yes. It's not going to be a Facebook filter type of, look at me. I'm this is not going to be like, it's not going to be like that. This is God removing spot and wrinkle from you. And that is what we're after, beloved. When we eat the living manna, he's going he's gonna to iron out those wrinkles with the word of God. Amen. 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 Nicodemus came to understand that it is by the bread of life, Jesus himself, that one becomes young again. But watch this. He makes you young in certain senses because I want you to notice what first Peter chapter two, verse one says, wherefore lay aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and evil speaking as newborn babes desiring the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. If so be you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. He's food, right? There. The Lord is food. The Lord is food. He said, I need you to be converted so you can begin to appreciate living manner. You see, when we are not converted, we don't appreciate living manner. When you are converted, it, even the little stuff, the milk, you're like, ooh, ooh. Listen, listen, listen. Watch this. Bible tells us. Let me just, let me move on here. Uh, uh, be not children. 1 Corinthians 14, 20. Brethren, be not children in understanding. How be it in malice be ye children, but in understanding be men. Did y'all catch that just now? <laughs> so living manna empowers your understanding as we saw before. So in one sense, it ages you in wisdom. In the other sense, it makes you like a child in malice. Come on, y'all. <laughs> Are you catching this? God says, I want you to be like children in malice. Malice, what is that? What does that word mean? Good, praise God. But in wisdom, we are like aged, the aged men, the men of wisdom, the women of wisdom. God says, uh, the word of God, the living manner will make you like a child in malice, but make you like the aged wisdom. Praise God. Praise God for this living manna. <clears throat> so, so we see that living manna gets rid of wrinkles. It enables the new birth experience. It makes one a child again. It reverses the aging process. Okay, so that's one. That's one. That's, that's, that's benefit number 10. What about benefit number 11? Benefit number 11. Well, we just heard that when we grow old, our sight and our hearing get affected. What if I told you that living manna could improve your vision and your hearing? Put one in the chat if you would be excited if I told you 
that living manna, eating living manna can strengthen your eyes and strengthen your ears. Would you like, would you like food that could actually like restore your vision? Pastor, what, what are you saying? What, what are you saying? Listen, living manna strengthens your eyes. How, Pastor? Listen, the Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 1, 19, we also have a more sure word of prophecy. <sighs> Come on, you guys. We have a more sure word of prophecy where unto you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arises in your heart. Beloved, when you begin to eat the word of God, God allows you, God, uh, watch, watch this. He increases your farsightedness. <coughs> see, before we came to the Lord, you couldn't see farsighted. All you could see, you couldn't see beyond the grave. But the word of God enables you to see beyond the grave. The word of God enables you to see what is after that. The word of God enables you through its prophetic element to see what is coming. You can see afar off. Y'all remember Daniel, right? Y'all remember Daniel? Remember how Daniel was given the vision? Of a far-sighted vision, Babylon, head of gold, Medo-Persia, chest and arms of silver, Greece, belly and thighs of brass, Rome, legs of iron, toes of iron and clay, representing this mingling of a church and state power, followed by a stone cut out without hands that would destroy. That was far-sightedness. How far can you see? Oh, man. <laughs> you sure you want to answer that question? <coughs> How far can you see? The living word of God strengthens our farsightedness so that we can see off in the distance and live. Je the Bible says it was for the joy that was set. Be Jesus saw in the distance the redeemed standing on the sea of glass. He had farsighted vision. The, the problem with many of us is we can't see that far. All we do is live for today. We have no idea. We cannot see afar off. And beloved, let me tell you, it is because churches across the world, people are getting fast foods. They're not getting the sure prophetic word of God. They're getting stuff that's sugary. Yes. And they're getting stuff that, that sounds like, whoa, we have secret knowledge that no one else knows. But beloved, let me tell you, that's not living manna. I'm not going to go through the list right now of, of false prophetic interpretations that are leading people to, 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 to look off in the wrong direction and to see things that are not there. But I need you to understand that the word of God is prophetic in nature and it enables us to see. For, this is why Jesus said, now I tell you before it comes to pass that when it comes to pass, you may believe that I'm he. I need you to watch this, y'all. Jesus is saying, I'm giving you prophecy so that when it happens, you will have faith that I am he. So did you see that? Prophecy produces faith. When we see the things that God has said coming to pass, it produces faith. That's how I came into the world. Beloved, when I learned about Daniel's vision, I was like, well, there is no possible other explanation in the world of how a man who lived that long ago could have accurately predicted the events of history down to our very day, except there was a God in heaven. And so, I believe. That was all it took, y'all. One night. One night. The Bible says prophecy is pointing to us that prophecy produces faith. But watch this. Here is a question. How does faith come? <laughs> How does faith come? Listen, y'all. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the what? By the word of God. 
It is the word. It is in hearing the word of God. It is the word of God that produces faith. So now we understand that faith is a product of the word of God. As we le eat living manna, God grants us far sighted vision. But we do not only get far sighted vision. We also improve our near sighted vision. How many of you would like to improve your near sighted vision? Come on, somebody. How many of you want to improve that nearsighted vision? Listen to me. Romans 13, 11 tells us, and that knowing that the time, knowing the time that it is now high time to awake out of our sleep, for now is our salvation, what? Nearer than when we believed. See, some of us can't see the stuff that's right up in our faces. We can't see the signs around us that are right up in our faces telling us we are living in, in, in incredible times right now. Get ready, get ready, get ready. We can't see. And it's because we're not eating the living manna. So our nearsightedness is just bad. Something will be all up in our face and we'll be like, huh? I don't see it. We can't even see when the devil is up in our face. We can't tell it's evil. We have become so nearsighted that, that the devil can put stuff right in our face and it's, it'll say evil. And we'll be like, huh? Oh, man, it, it, it's too blurry. I can't see it. It's too blurry. I can't see it. You know, why are you so... You know, who says this is wrong? Who says this is wrong? Who says that's wrong? I mean, you know, we're living in a different society today. And, and, and how can you say that this is wrong? all up in our face? And yet we don't understand. We don't see that the word of God is pointing to us. Look. And, and so our, our nearsighted vision becomes, it's like we are blind. And when we are blind, beloved, we make the most foolish mistakes. So I, I got to tell you about the commercial. I got to tell you about the commercial. I even thought about playing this commercial, but I said, I'm going to just tell you. So there's a, there's a Geico commercial. The Geico commercial um, is making fun of, you know, certain things. And it always tells you get, you know, car insurance because it's a simple decision, right? In this commercial, <clears throat> there are four young people that are running. And you can see it's like a scary scenario, a scary setting. And these four young people are running. And they're running from a killer. And uh, they get to, the to this house. Uh, <clears throat> and the house looks very like just, you know, totally like don't go to that house. <clears throat> and they're like, what are we going to do? And, you know, one of, one of the girls is like, oh, let's run to the shed. Or yeah, let's go to the basement. And... And the other girl's like, she's crying. She's like, why can't we just go to the running car? And the camera pans, and there is a running car. Nobody's in the car. It is running. She's like, why can't we just go to the running car? And the other guy says, what are you, stupid? That's a dumb idea. And then someone says, let's go to the shed. All these chainsaws are in the shed. Let's go to the shed. And they run to the shed where the killer is. And the killer is standing there behind the shed, and he rolls his eyes like, these people are so stupid. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. You ever realize how when we are outside the movie, watch this now, we have all the sense in the world when we're outside the movie. You ever notice that? No, don't do that. No, don't go. No. <sighs> we are brilliant. But why is it that we live life like we're in the movie? We're doing those stupid things and I can see angels up in heaven like, no, nah, no, he did not just, what? Why are you doing that? It's like we are blinded to the evils of the world around us and we make the most foolish decisions simply because we can't see. Right outside the movie, vision is 2020. You know, don't go into that house. You know, don't get with that girl. Don't get with that guy. You know all these things when you're watching the movie. But then you go out and you live life like you're in the movie. You make the same foolish decisions that they make in the movie. Come on, y'all. 
God is trying to strengthen our nearsightedness so that we do not. The Bible says in Proverbs 27, 12, a prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself. But the simple pass on and are punished. Come on, y'all, understand this. Isaiah 5, 20, woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. <clears throat> we need eye salve, amen. We need to be able to see not only afar off, but even when things are right up in our faces. And sometimes God is right in our face, speaking to us, calling us, pleading for us, knocking at the door. And we're like, huh? Ooh. Living manna strengthens your farsightedness. It strengthens your nearsightedness. But watch this. It also strengthens your night vision. How many of you have trouble seeing in the night? Come on, y'all. How many of y'all have trouble seeing in the dark? Listen. The Bible says in Hebrews 11, 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, <clears throat> the evidence of things not seen. Faith. Remember the Bible says the just walk by faith and not by sight. In other words, faith, the, faith which comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God is what enables us to see in the dark. When things are going bad all around us, when there's darkness all around us, faith is that vision that enables us to penetrate the darkness, to see the hand of Jesus moving, to see the hand of God working in a situation where you might not see it with the natural eye. Beloved, God is trying to strengthen our night vision. He's trying to strengthen our farsightedness. He's trying to strengthen our nearsightedness. He's also trying to strengthen our faith. Now, you need to understand because I need to break this down for you. I need y'all to listen carefully. You see, faith is trusting, watch this, in the vision God has of you. Do I need to say that again? Faith is trusting in the vision that God has of you. You say, Pastor, what do you mean? Let me tell you. Jeremiah 29, 11, God speaking says, For I know the thoughts I think towards you, say the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. That's prophecy. I don't know if you caught that. God has a prophecy concerning your life. And that prophecy is to give you an expected end. That prophecy is to see you gain the victory over these things that you struggle with. That prophecy is to see you get over anger and, and no longer be a bitter person. That's his vision of you. It says, then shall you call upon me and you shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you and you shall seek me and find me when you search for me with what? All your heart. So in searching for God, what you're actually searching for is his vision of who you are. See, sometimes our vision of who we are is, man, I'm wicked, I'm a sinner, God doesn't love me, da 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 But God doesn't see you for who you are. He sees you for who you can be. And that is his prophecy of you. So watch this. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 29, 18, where there is no vision, the people what? See? When you're trying to work out, when you, when you are overweight or you don't like the way your body looks and you want to work out, the first thing that you need to do is envision the body you want. Put a one in the chat if you understand what I'm saying. You got to envision the body that you want. And, and that vision then drives you you have a goal. You're striving for something. Well, beloved, in the spiritual sense, we, we have seen that God is trying to, trying to bodybuild us spiritually. So God has provided a vision 
of what he wants us to look like, or I should say who he wants us to look like. <clears throat> and so watch this. As we are beholding Jesus, what he's saying to us is, this is my vision of you. Now I want you, to, I know, I know, I know it looks crazy. You be like Jesus, I know, I know, I know, I know. But I need you to have, come on y'all, what's that word? Give me the word. I need you to have what? Faith. Not faith in yourself, but faith in God. You really think, you really think that I can leave this industry that has offered me a million dollars to go preach? The, you really think I can do that? Lord, you really think that even in my drug addicted state, you really think, you really, really, really think that I can become someone who testifies of the goodness of God and the power to, 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 to save from addictions? You really think that? You really think I could be that? And beloved, it's when you begin to understand God's thoughts towards you revealed in his word, revealed by eating the living manna. It's when you under, begin to understand that, that you're like, whoa. Well, if God has faith that I could do, if Jesus believes that this is who I can be, and he has, seen, he, has, he, has, he has said, listen, this is my future for you, and even though we have free will, we can choose to say, nah, I don't want that future, or we can say, all right, I'm, I'm going to do this by faith, because faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Lock, oh, watch, watch. Y'all may not have ever seen this, but I want you to check this out. Watch this. The Bible says, where there is no vision, the people perish. But look how it ends. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Why does it end like that? Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Let me, let me share something with you. This is, this is absolutely amazing. The Bible tells in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that's, that's the promises of God, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust, and beside this, giving all diligence, watch this, giving all diligence and to your uh, diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness ch uh, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they shall make you that you shall neither be barren nor fruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Watch this. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see what? Afar off and has forgotten that he was purged with... You can't, you don't have long distance vision because you can't see what God has ordained for your future. Look, look, I'm going to come back to that in a second. I need you to see this. I need you to understand this. The Bible lays out the Ten Commandments, yes? Do you know what the Ten Commandments are? Come on. The Ten Commandments are God's prophecy of who he wants you to be. Listen, if you follow me, you will not have other gods before you. If you follow me, you will not take the Lord's name... These are the things that in me you will not do. <clears throat> the Ten Commandments is God's prophecy over us. It's like he's speaking future tense. If you love me, and if you follow me, and if you trust me, you will not lie. You're going to stop stealing. You're going to stop. If you trust me, I'm, I'm painting a picture of your future for you. This is why the Bible strengthens our faith because it's showing us just how much God believes that we can be better than what we actually are, than who we actually are. God says, listen, listen, I got you. 
And if you would just let me, if he would let me feed you with the living manna, if he would let me uh, uh, do this for you, if you would let me work in you, if you would let me live in you, I will make you, I will, you, your prophecy of yourself will be fulfilled. Living manna not only allows you to see farsighted, not only does it allow you to see nearsighted, not only does it allow you to see in the dark, but beloved, the last thing we're going to cover before we move to that last point is that living manna allows you to see the light. Eating living manna allows you to see the light. Pastor, what do you mean by seeing the light? What I mean is that many of us, when we read the word of God, we don't understand. We can't see. We don't see Christ in the text. We don't see the beauty of the light shining from the scriptures. All we see is darkness. All we see is confusion. Eating living manna, spending time in the word of God, chewing slowly, allow, it, it causes the text to light up. And when the text lights up, that's when you have those ooh moments, man. I got to go take this bread and share it with somebody else. Many of us read the word of God and we just can't see the light. So we read over entire books, missing the light. Let me give you an example. Very quickly, the book of Job. Many of us look at that book and say, man, that's a confusing book. But let me just break this. Let me show you the light that many of you have been missing. Watch this. In Job chapter 1 and 2, Job is tried. Job chapter 3 through 40, Job is tempted, or, or, or <clears throat> Job is, 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 is tested, and there's an attempt by his friends to prove him guilty. In Job chapter 41 and 42, those friends who tried to accuse Job of being guilty, and that's why God was punishing him, must now go through Job to be forgiven. That's the whole book of Job, y'all. Job is a perfect man who is tried and tested. Then the people around him tell him it is because of his sin that God has rejected him. So he is rejected. He is, he is, he is, <laughs> whoo, whoo. Here is a man that, that everyone around thinks God has rejected him and forsaken him and then invites him to curse God and he refuses. And at the end of it all, God restores him. Listen to me, y'all. God restores him and then the people who were against him now have to come to him to be forgiven. They have to go through him. God says, I'm not listening to y'all. Y'all need to go through Job. Job will offer up something for you, and Job will I listen to. Come on. <clears throat> Come on. Now, look, I haven't said anything other than told you the story. But I'm sure right now, many of you are going, whoa, wait a minute. I didn't see that light in there. How did I miss that? <clears throat> this is what happens when we chew quickly. We're not being benefited by the living manna. Do you catch what I'm saying? Because now we see that just as Job was a perfect man and tried, Jesus was the ultimate perfect man who was tried. Just as Vince Job that he was guilty on account of something and that this is why God had rejected him. So they tried to accuse Christ of blasphemy against God. And just as Job was restored at the end of his trial and exalted, so Jesus was restored at the end of his trial. And just as those who had spoken against Job now have to go through him, so the entire world must go through Christ to be redeemed. Come on, y'all. We just juiced down the entire book of Job in like three minutes. This is light that is in the word of God, y'all. 
When we, when we learn to eat living manna, it not only helps us to see farsighted, it not only helps us to see nearsighted, it not only helps us to see in the dark, but it also helps us to see in the light. And the Bible says in John 5, 39, search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life. And these are they which testify of me. The scriptures, beloved, the living manna points to the living manna. It points to Christ. And the more we eat of this living manna, the more powerful it will be. Now, I'm getting ready to wrap this up. I need to share two more things very quickly. Remember I said that living manna not only improves your sight, but it also improves your hearing. That's one benefit. Listen, listen. In Romans 10, 17, the Bible says again, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But the problem many of us have is this. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit and said unto him, thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into it. Do you know that there's a deaf spirit? Did y'all know that there was a deaf spirit? You know what a deaf spirit is? A deaf spirit is not going to allow you to hear. So you can sit in some of the most powerful sermons and just not hear because your heart isn't right. The Holy Spirit can be trying to speak to you and guide you. This is the way. What you, you shall hear a word behind you saying this is the way. And you have a deaf spirit. You can't hear. You will not hear. The word of God says A and you say nah, B. Beloved, listen to me. The word of God opens up our ears so that we can hear and understand. When we eat living manna, the purpose of it is to open up our ears. That's right. It's not a, it, it is an infection, actually. It's an infection of the enemy. God is trying to restore our sight. God is trying to restore our hearing. The Bible says, why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my words. Luke eleven twenty eight. 28, it says, he said, yea, yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and that keep it. We need, beloved, to have our hearing cured by the living manner. And the last point that I will share, the last point that I will share is this. Living manna is the only known food to reverse death. Living manna is the only known food that reverses death. See, most other, you know, cures and stuff, they cure you before you die, right? The, the whole goal is to not have you die. Living manna is so powerful that even when you die, uh, let me break it down this way. Let me break it down this way. Um, remember, Jesus said, I'm the living bread that came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the light of the world. You remember what happened when Jesus was crucified? He spent three days in the grave. But watch this. Because he was the word of God. Man, don't let me kick. Because he was the word of God. Listen, the word of God. <laughs> reversed death. Jesus said, I want to show you what happens if I am the living bread, right? If I'm the living bread and I defeat death, then if you eat the living bread and it's in you, though you die, one day that living bread is going to bring, kick you back into life. If you have the living bread in you, that is the element that's going to preserve you. Millions and millions have died with living manna in their system. And if you die, beloved, with living manna in your system, it's a wrap. You can trust. You can trust. Listen to me. The Bible says, watch, watch. The Bible says heaven and earth shall pass away. Watch. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. So if you're eating that which shall not pass away, beloved, that makes you by nature, watch this, even though death may consume us, 
we will not pass away ultimately because Christ will come and he will speak. He will what? He will speak the word. And because we were used to responding to the word in life, when he speaks the word to us in death, we will be doing the same thing we had done in life. Beloved, we got to die with living manna in our system. If none of the other benefits were there, and if it was only this one benefit, it is worth it. It is the most powerful bread on earth. If it was only this benefit, Living manna produces strength. Put that in the chat. Living manna enhances endurance. Put it in the chat. Living manna enhances the mind. Living manna is a powerful antioxidant. Living manna is a powerful antidepressant. Living manna is a powerful anti-inflammatory. Living manna reverses heart disease. Living manna boosts the immune system. Living manna is a potent anti-venom. Living manna reverses ages and gets rid of wrinkles. <laughs> Living manna strengthens the vision so that you can see good. Farsighted, you can see good. Nearsighted, you can see good in the dark and you can see good the light. And finally, beloved, living manna reverses death. Beloved, if there was ever a time to get rid of the fast food diet, the fast food Bible study, the fast food sermon, the, the, the fast food that is full of sugar, that is full of fat, but empty of actual nutrition. If there was ever a time to get rid of dead bread and to eat living manna, the time is now. It is not too late to change your diet. It is not too late. It is not too late to begin to be benefited by the living word of God. The living word of God should not be dependent upon your pastor. The living word of God should not be dependent upon your favorite preacher. The living word of God, you must seek out that word daily. You must eat the bread daily. The living word of God is going to give you new life. And I, I want to make an appeal right now for those of you who are watching this, who realize, you know what, <clears throat> I have... I have been missing this living manna. I have been missing this bread of life. And Lord, I need to be born again. I'm, you might need to be baptized. Today you're saying, all right, I'm on that journey. I'm making a decision today to be baptized. Listen, if you, if you are making that decision today, you're saying, Lord, that's me. I got to give my life. Or maybe I was baptized before, but it was a it was, I was the same old me. And I'm realizing now that's not what baptism is supposed to be. I am supposed to be transformed day by day by your grace. I'm going to encourage you. I'm going to encourage you. If that's you, put something in the chat. Put a one in the chat. Say, Pastor, that's me. I want to be baptized. And I'm going to encourage you to go to your local church. I don't know where you live. Go to your local church. Talk to your pastor. If you're understanding that you need to study more, I'm going to encourage you. You need to study more, but make that decision. Make that move. Don't wait for another opportunity to be like, okay, now I'm going to give. No, do it now, beloved. I'm encouraging you to, 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 to this day say, I'm making that decision. If I've never been baptized or I realize that I need to be rebaptized, Lord, help me make that decision now. And I'm going to go talk to my pastor. I'm going to go tell my pastor, I need this. I need this. I need to be rededicated. I need to be rebaptized or I need to be baptized for the first time. But I need this to happen because I, I, I need to begin a new journey. If, if you're saying today, I want to, to start. St I got an email yesterday. I got a text yesterday, a message yesterday. And, and this lady just said, I have been, I've been a Christian for 
all my life. And I'm just now realizing through this series that I've been feeding on fast foods. And she said, Pastor, I'm ready. I'm ready to learn. I'm ready to understand how to eat living matter. She said, what do I do? What do I do? And from that conversation, let me tell you what we have decided. We have decided, listen carefully to me, we have decided that we are going to begin a seven-week Christian strength training living manna program. You know, when you want to go to the gym and they have these, you know, six-week programs on how to, you know, lose weight six weeks, we're going to do that for the soul. And we're going to encourage you to actually be, if you've watched these four messages, we're going to encourage you to, to, say, to sign up for this. It's, not, it's going to start probably in another uh, month to two months, but we're going to go through every day a, a program designed to have you locked in every day, to be exercising every day, to be checking your diet every day for seven weeks. And listen, let me tell you, you might think seven weeks is a short time. Paul... It took him three days to go from old man to new man. Three days. But we're slow, so we're going to take seven weeks. And we're going to go through, beloved, and we're going to see what does it mean to eat living manna daily? What does it mean to exercise forgiveness and mercy and grace? Every day is going to be an assignment. And, beloved, we're going to be putting that, 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 that program together over the next few weeks. I'm going to encourage you, sign up for it. Sign up for it because we're going to need, we're going to need, we're going to need to become strong Christians, spiritual training, Christians of strength, people of strength to be able to withstand, beloved, what this world is doing. So stay tuned for that. I'm going to come back to this. Again, if you are saying I need to renew my walk with God, Put a one in that chat. I've already had dealt with those who want to be baptized. If, if, you're, under, if you're saying, I want to study, I, I've never, I'm new to this and I need to study, Pastor, how can I get connected and study with, with maybe you or maybe one of, the, uh, uh, one of the people on your team to study for baptism? Um, put, put that one in the chat. I'm going to ask you guys. I don't know if Patrice is following the ones or whatever, but we're going to, I'm going to ask you to email Patrice. If you're saying, hey, I would like to become a member. Hey, I would like to, to, to be baptized in my local church and I want to study. Whatever it is, send Patrice that email, patrice at livingmanor.live. And beloved, I pray this four-part series has changed the way you view scriptures forever. I pray that you will no longer be content with fast food, but you will desire the living manna with all that you have and with all that you are. Before we pray, I'm going to invite, I don't know if Charles is on, um, but I am going to invite Charles on because I just want to talk about the after sermon. There you go, Charles. Um, we're going to pray after this, but Charles, can we just talk about the after sermon discussion, how that's going to work? Well, Pastor, first of all, please allow me to say, you know, one of the frustrations that uh, we have after hearing a dynamite sermon that can be transformative, especially a series like this, is we often don't have people to share it with, to share enthusiasm with. And so what we've done with Living Manna is we are going to have that post-sermon discussion. In fact, let me put in the chat where you can find that discussion. Uh, and it'll be on Altar Live. You can go to the usual Altar Live link. The direct link is there in the chat now if you're watching uh, on social or in, uh, if you're on Altar Live right now, you can go out to the main page, scroll down until you see the post-sermon discussion. And, uh, and Pastor, we're going to talk some more about what you mentioned in this, uh, in this particular presentation. You know, last week, we uh, we were focused in our post sermon discussion on meditating on the cross every day for the past week. So uh, I'm sure many of us are excited to share how that activity went 
where we were meditating on the cross of Christ every week, trying to receive that power. And now today, Pastor, understanding that the Ten Commandments are God's prophecy of who he wants us to be hmm. and that the living manna is the only food known to man that can reverse death. I'm sure we're going to have a fantastic discussion today. So please join us after the sermon. Now, Pastor, in, in Altar Live, directly after the sermon. Pastor, there's one other thing. You just brought up the strength training program, I think I heard you say, didn't mm -hmm, I? Mm -hmm, absolutely. And, uh, and I already saw a few people in the chat wanting to sign up. And I do have a link to sign up for that. And uh, Pastor, I think it would be great if you're going to sign up for this training program that you can uh, make sure that you watched the entire series of the 12 benefits of living manna. Uh, so make sure you do that first. But I do want you to have the link there. You should see it in the chat now. And that's the link that you can use to sign up exactly for the strength training program. Uh, Pastor, any other words on that before we continue? No, just um, um, I'm excited about this. And I think that uh, people are going to be blessed by it. And um, you know, I just I look forward to the transformation, the before and the after is going to be a powerful thing. Make sure you take your before character picks. That's right. Keep them to yourself. We uh, to share it. And, what do you what do you what do you want people to see seven weeks from now? From the time we begin, what do you want people to see? You got to have your before your before picture and without a vision. You can have no goal. So, uh, Charles, I think there uh, someone is saying they uh, there's an issue with the link there. It's a 404 yeah. message. Okay, and that would be for uh, Saints. If you could help me out, which link that is? I'm checking the link right now, just so you know. Okay, the strength training looks like it's working on my end. I'll tell you what. Just join us on Altar Live and we'll get yeah. that straightened out and make sure that you're able to see it. If you're watching this on replay, uh, the link will certainly be working. So don't worry about that. Uh, yeah. Just click the link there and you'll be able to sign up right there. Okay. All I'm right. Just a couple of people were able to sign up. So, Pastor, yeah. we're going to go over to Altar Live and start our discussion. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to close out in prayer and uh, we'll have a, a short uh, video uh, right after this. And then. Um, We'll see you guys. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for speaking your word today. We thank you for helping us to understand just how powerful living manna is. Lord, may we be unsatisfied with anything less than the living word of God. May we desire hunger and thirst after it. And Lord, may we take this word so seriously. May we chew it ever so slowly to pull everything that we can out of it that our bodies, our systems may be blessed and strengthened by it. We thank you for the sacrifice you made on the cross. We thank you for the bread you have given to mankind that we may eat of it and not only live powerful lives here, but also live with you forever in eternity. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and for answering this prayer because we ask it in the precious and holy name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us today. If this is your first time visiting with us, we invite you to check out our website at livingmana.live. There you will learn more about our mission to reach the world with the gospel of Jesus. We have exciting live programs throughout the week covering topics like physical health, mental health, prayer, learning how to prove God's existence, and much more. If you would like to support the ministry, you can click on the tithe and offering link on our website. We ask that you continue to pray for the church as God continues to open doors for our programming to reach the world. Thank you again for your prayers and your support.